Hello everyone, welcome to What If Deku Becomes the Monarch of Shadows Part 3. Before we start please go support Piano2099 for writing that awesome fanfic. Now let's begin. Chapter 30. Izuku gawked as he looked around to see multiple Shadow Knights standing. Awesome he muttered and then noticed the name. Shadow Infantry Level 1. Rank Normal. I knew it they can level up with me cheered Izuku. Shadow Mage Level 1. Rank Elite. And 27 soldiers. I can create 30, but I can only save 20. For now, ILL release the infantry and only keep the mage, thought Izuku. I am sorry for calling on you guys. Release, said Izuku as the shadows were released. You cannot recall shadows sent into nothingness. As he then turned, he saw Igris. If I add him, there will be two air rank or extremely strong people in my arsenal. Me and him. He is loyal and chivalrous yeah, I want him, muttered Izuku. It sounded so wrong. It did. To clarify, I meant that as my soldier, I was already in love with Achako, plus I am completely straight. Arise. For a moment some darkness was emanated from him, until he released a shockwave, and the black clouds dissipated. You failed to extract the shadow. You have two attempts left. But I didn't he know that even a few hours will make such a big difference, thought Izuku as he tried again and failed. He then looked at the throne and back at him. Stop protecting an empty throne. Instead, serve a new master, a new king. Stop trying to protect someone who has already left and protect me, who is in front of you. Arise. Shadow Knight Level 7. Rank Knight. Shadow of Rank Knight and higher can be named. Blood Red Knight Igris. Nah, too edgy. Just Igris, Igris is fine, muttered Izuku. Igris Level 7. Rank Knight. You have successfully extracted a shadow. Take good care of me, Igris. I am depending on you, said Izuku and Igris kneeled to him, causing Izuku to sweat drop. Name Izuku Midoriya level 30. Dob none fatigue 0. Idle the chosen 1 plus 2 others. HP 25100. MP 2410. Strength 52. Vitality 49. Agility 46. Intelligence 45. Sense 45. Remaining points 5. Izuku had just entered his apartment and was in the living room as he was unable to sleep. Mides about 6.30. I should wake her up, said Izuku as he went into Izumi's room. Hey Zumi, come on, wake up, it is 6.30 in the morning, said Izuku as he shook her. Don't worry bro, there is parents teachers conference till 10, I can sleep in today, mumbled Izumi in sleep. Izuku remembered Izumi telling him many times about multiple parents teachers conferences, and he could feel the sadness in her voice every time. Izuku took out his phone and dialed a number. Was it Deku? Hey Kaken, can you please not yell in the morning? Asked Izuku while nursing his ears. I don't give a buck deck Bakugo was cut off by multiple bangs and yelling, and Izuku could hear words like too early, stfu brat, and old hag on the other end, tch. Old hag, bossing me around. Anyways, what is the matter Deku? Asked Bakugo. Yeah, so tell teach I want to come to school today, said Izuku. Oh? And why? Did you and Pink Cheeks banged each other? Asked Bakugo. But no it is Izumi's parents teachers conference, and then I decided to move up my internship to 11 to 3, so I could pick Izumi and take her out for lunch and stuff. You know, brother sister stuff. We have not tea hanged out since forever, and I feel bad for neglecting her, said Izuku. Alright, I'll do it. Also, there is this awesome action movie, if you want to go. She loved action if I remember correctly, said Bakugo. Yes yeah, she does, said Izuku fondly. I bucker yelled Bakugo as he cut the call. What he didn't he know was that Izumi had just gotten up and was listening to him. Wow I how much more awesome can he get? Like is there any limit to his coolness? She immediately went inside her room and texted Achako. The day before, Achako and Izuku had returned at around 7 at their house, and Achako and Izumi got along so well that by 10 when she was leaving, Achako had two albums of Izuku's baby photos, and Izumi had her number. Iraka-san, Izuku is treating me out today. Do you want to join us? Texted Izumi. You and Deku-kun? Yeah, I don't know, I don't want to intrude on your sibling time, don't worry about that. Maybe we could go shopping or something, sorry, I don't have that much money. Window shopping. You make a good point, so it's a plan, alright. Ani chan called Izumi as she walked out. Hey Izumi, I am coming for your PTA, said Izuku. I heard it Ani chan she said as she hugged him tightly. Izuku giggled at her excitement as he hugged her back. Who the heck gets excited for PTM? Hoppers who are good at everything, unlike you. A few hours later, Izumi was at the gate waiting for Izuku, who walked out of his room. Izumi looked at Izuku intently as she opened and closed her mouth multiple times. Who are you and what have you done to my brother? Asked Izumi. Huh? What do you mean? Asked Izuku, confused. My brother was never so fashionable. He would wear a shirt t-shirt or a formal t-shirt, said Izumi, and Izuku teared up. About that, Aminari made me throw all but one of them said Izuku as he cried in I'm style. Izumi sweat dropped as she commended Kaminari. Speaking of Kaminari, he just cold and t get a certain girl out of his head. Best should I text her? 
B was currently on the train to his school and was thinking about her. Bucket, he sent a text message saying hey Jiru dot. A few seconds later, he got a reply. Finally I was wondering why you didn't he text me. I thought it would seem desperate or creepy, he ch. And what s with Jiru? Yesterday you called me Kyoka. W well I thought it would come off as creepy, stuttering through text. Did I make you blush pretty boy? It was moments before Kyoka's performance and she was wondering where she got all that confidence from. Yeah. Urea teaser you know that. Nah, I just like to flirt with random people. Nah, just you. Aminari was feeling warm and happy as a few people occasionally looked at him and the older ones thought, ah, young love, well the younger ones, mostly girls, thought is he single. All the best Kyoka. I know you're going to kill it today. And don't he dare disagree. Alright alright dad xd. Oh my god Kaminari, get your mind out of the gutter. Meanwhile, Kyoka was thinking along the same lines. WTF I mean he is daddy made her get your mind out of gutter Kyoka all that horny stuff other girls talk about is starting to affect me. Girls were all staring at Izuku with slight to extreme blush on their faces. Heck, even some boys who considered themselves straight too stared at him. As for those openly gay or behexual, they weren't even hiding it. Wow okay I do look good, thought Izuku as he heard a few conversations due to his enhanced senses. Who is that guy? Yeah. How can someone be so hot and cute at the same time? And look at the way he dresses, wow. Is he that girl's brother? How old is he? I wonder if I could get his number. Ooh oh, Yuri popular brother. I wonder if Yuri interested in anyone here. Oh hell no you know I love I mean like a chaka whisper yelled Izuku. No need to hide it, Yuri way past liking her, Yuri completely in love, said Izumi playfully shutting Izuku up. Anyways, let us hang out after class with my future sister-in-law, said Izumi playfully. Izumi, yeah, his mom would crack these jokes if she was awake. But right now he had everything he needed. As for his mom, yeah, he would figure something out, find some way, even if he had to search the entire universe for it. Chapter 31 Izuku had just exited Izumi's school after attending the PTA, only to hear praises, and was now taking a train to Tokyo to David Shield's Japanese office, which was inside Might Tower. Hello Trev, could you tell Prof that I am here? Asked Izuku at the desk. Ah, Izuku, yeah, I'll tell him. Just a moment, said Trevor as he picked the landline. Mr. Shield, Midoriya is here, said Trevor. Two minutes later, he was on the 30th floor, walking in a large corridor. Ah, Midoriya, Yuri here, good, said David. Mr. Shield, yeah, I came for internship, said Izuku, as Shield smiled. Sorry Midoriya, today I am a little busy, so you get to have a paid leave. Also, the modifications you made in the costume of Godzilla to allow him to transform more comfortably has gotten us a lot of money, so Yuri in for a bonus, said David. To be honest, it was surprising how good he was at analyzing. It was nothing professor. But are you sure about the paid leave thing? Asked Izuku. Yeah, feel free to do whatever you want to. Maybe you could train against some robots, said David, and so Izuku did. For the next two hours, he along with All Might, who had come over since it was his office. But anyways, All Might was both scared and in awe of Izuku's newfound abilities, since it was scary. Now, it was time for him to make his way back to Musatafu. Enki was bored. It was a break, and the last two classes had been uneventful for him. In the short amount of time with Ichigo and Izuku, his academic skills had jumped from average for his age to their level, i.e., a graduate. So he knew everything that had happened today in the class. Their competition must be over by now, he thought as he pulled out his phone. Io, so how did it go? Io? Arent to you getting a little impatient. Giving me nicknames on the second day. Paminari deadpanned at the text. Normally, he would get embarrassed, but he could just feel her smugness radiating from the screen. Do fast. Give me one chance, I'll show you what too fast really is. He turned the table so quick thought Kyoka blushing as her friend sat next to her. That's shut up, so how did it go? I want it was awesome, it wasn't he awesome, you are. Are you free after school? Aminari was very nervous while asking this. This would very easily be one of the hardest things he had done. But yeah, why not? Ioka meanwhile blushed at the prospect of another date. So she quickly typed a yes. I know this really awesome sushi place. Wanna go? Sushi? One tea that be expensive. Don't tea worry, it s on me. No, it s fine, maybe later. Oh, come one, please. I really want to go with you, but I don't tea want to waste your money. It s worth it if it s you. Cheesy, but I mean a tea tea. Are you sure? Yeah, I want to go with you. Fine, is rolling eyes your default emoticon. Ioka was now blushing so hard that she could be mistaken for a tomato. Another date ai ah. She noticed Kaminari had texted her to wear formals, and she replied with a yes dot. Yes, another date with Kayo. Izumi and Achako had met up at the gate of the mall they had decided to go to and were waiting for Izuku, who had decided to change before coming here. Hey girls, he greeted as he walked up to them. 
Oh my god he looks so cool thought Ichako as Izuku flashed a smile at her and hugged his sister. Alright, let us go, said Izuku cheerfully, which surprised Izumi and Ichako. I've been never heard of a boy who is excited about window shopping. Others are like no kill me instead said Izumi. Well, if you both are happy, nothing else matters, said Izuku with a smile. And with that, the shopping spree began. Izumi and Ichako were rushing from store to store, while Izuku was using his photographic memory to its best to remember all the things they really liked. After all, this was his plan for birthday gifts and other things. Plus he also wanted to gift both of them something today. They both did make a big difference in his life. Ayoka was waiting for Kaminari at her house, while her parents were sitting in front of her. So another date? Asked her father. Yeah, he is awesome, said Jiru excitedly. Are you sure he is a good guy? I mean, kids nowadays are really deceiving, said her mom. I am pretty sure he is a nice guy. Spend one hour with him and you do agree with me, said Jiru rolling her eyes. The next moment, the bell rang, and her mom went to open the door. Ah, you must be Jiru's mom. Hello, my name is Denki Kaminari, nice to meet you, ma'am, said Kaminari as he slightly bowed. Ah, so you're re Kaminari. Must say, you dress up rather well, said Mika. Thank you. Is Jiru ready? Asked Kaminari politely. Yeah, but why don't you come in? She asked and Kaminari nodded. So you re Kaminari? Asked Kayatoku. Yes, sir. I am Denki Kaminari. He seems nice. I am Kayatoku Jiru. Nice to meet you, sir, said Kaminari. No need to call me sir. Also, best of luck with your date, he said as Kaminari blushed bright red. T.T. thank you he muttered shyly. Just bring her back before eight. Yes sir said Kaminari saluting. Ayatoku sweat dropped to Kaminari with a chuckle while Mika giggled. Hiru just watched this with an amused expression, trying not to laugh at Kaminari. He looks so innocent, she thought with a chuckle. Alright Pikachu, let us go, said Jiru expecting him to retort. However, he grinned and walked with her. Alright yelled excitedly. Someone s eager, said Jiru. Well, of course, I db. I mean, it s you I am going on a date with, said Kaminari as he gently flicked her forehead, causing her to blush brightly. Ay ah this is the best day ever, chapter 32. It was around 7 pm, and Kaminari and Kaioka were returning from their date. She had really enjoyed with Kaminari, as they goofed around a lot. Man, I wish this day never ended, said Kaminari as he held Kaioka's hand. Then me too muttered Kaioka with a blush. Hey said Kaminari, w what? Asked Kaioka, still struggling to look into his eyes. Listen I know we just met yesterday, but I feel like I have known you for a really long time. The way you talk to me, the way you make me blush, the way you tease me I just can't get enough of it. Kayo I really like you. I honestly plan to wait till UA exams at least, but I can't hold myself back. You don't have to answer me now, or even give an answer at all. I just want to let you know that I think I love you. W what? Asked a dazed Jiru. I love you Kayoka, said Kaminari looking at the ground, his eyes glistening. You really are impatient, said Kayoka with a chuckle as she kissed him on his cheek. Kaminari without wasting time hugged her, his face snuggled into her shoulder. I love you too idiot, said Kayoka. Why you mean it? Asked Kaminari wide-eyed as tears started to form in his eyes. Yeah, said Jiru pushing her fingers together, and then noticed tears in his eyes. Kaminari what s wrong did I say something? Oh ah sorry, it s just that I've been never heard anyone say that to me in years, so I guess I was just overwhelmed, said Kaminari wiping his tears. Well, just so you know, I am not the sentimental one, so when I say something like this, I really mean it, said Jiru. But you met me like yesterday, how can you be so sure? Asked Kaminari. I just am, said Jiru with a smile. Izuku, Izumi, and Ichako were now returning, with the trio going to Izuku and Izumi's home. And then Deku-kun went bam, and the hobgoblin's head rolled on the ground like it was nothing said Ichako excitedly. Wow brother, Yuri so cool gasped Izumi with stars in her eyes, as Izuku chuckled and hugged them both. Nah, Achako Nichan, do you want to stay tonight with me and Ani Chan? Asked Izumi excitedly. I don't mind, said Achako with a blush. Really? Asked Izuku. I, I mean, if it isn't a problem for you guys, she said, pushing her fingers against each other. No, it isn't, said Izumi excitedly. Izuku was just blushing extremely hard at the thought of having her in his house. Why, yeah, I don't mind, said Izuku. Yeah, we can watch movies, said Izumi excitedly. Yes, Achako replied excitedly. Izuku just chuckled at both of them, and they blushed on realizing they were acting like kids in front of Izuku. Ah, sorry, we were excited, they said simultaneously. No no no, I love the way you both are acting, it is hella cute, said Izuku with a close-eyed smile. No, you're cute, said Ichako, and then bit her tongue on realizing what she said. Oh, thanks, said Izuku teasingly. It then hit him. But auntie we all have school tomorrow. 
They were all at Izuku's house, and Achako had gotten her stuff from her house, because as she and Izumi stated, the sleepover was more important. So right now, they were all watching a movie, during which Izumi had fallen asleep. Ayalel just stuck her in, said Izuku as he got up and carried Izumi to her room, with Achako following behind closely. He tucked her in, kissed her head, and came out of her room as Achako watched him lovingly. The S just so pure how can someone be that perfect? Say, Chako chan do you want to eat something or do you want to go to sleep? We haven't tea had dinner, Izumi ate too much ice cream, said Izuku with a chuckle. Well I too feel pretty full. But I don't tea want to go to sleep. Can we finish the movie? Asked Achako. Yeah, Ayalel just grab some blankets, said Izuku. Alright, said Achako as she sat on the couch. Soon Izuku was back, and they played the movie. They were so engrossed in the movie that they didn't tea notice that they had started to cuddle. When the movie ended, they both noticed their position and blushed really hard. Oh Achako I am sorry, I started Izuku as he let go of her only for Achako to grab his hand. See can we as stay like this? Izuku could swear he had never seen anything cuter in his life. Because I h a d n t she was so cute I felt my soul leave my body. Anyways, so Achako was blushing a lot as she refused to meet his eyes, all the while hugging him as if her life depended on it. Oh Achako? Asked Deku, confused. D please? No, I am not saying we can tea I was just surprised. I also want to stay like this, said Izuku blushing as he put his arms around her. Deku-kun said Achako as she looked into his eyes. I really really like you. He yelped Izuku in surprise. Yeah you saved our lives in the dungeon, you were the first boy who didn't tea judge me for being poor or due to my motives to become a hero, since the time we have met you've only been extremely supportive of me, you have treated me as if I am something. I feel safe when I am with you Deku-kun, so please said Achako as tears started to form in her eyes. For Achako, it was starting to become unbearable. At first, she thought about pushing her feelings away and just focusing on dungeons and getting into UA, but in a short amount of time, these feelings had grown immensely to a point where she couldn't not act upon them. And that is why right now she feared that he would reject her. Acha I can call you that right. She just nodded while looking at him. Acha, you know about the dungeon incident at school. So, after that, I hadn't been able to heal. And then I had to kill those bastards who tried to kill me, Kaminari and Ichigo, and then Takeru Kaguro. All that time I was hurting. My sister did her best, she supported me at every step, but still, something was missing. I felt empty inside. That s when I found you. I felt complete I know this is really cheesy, but yeah. I love you too Achako. They both were hugging each other as time went on. Deku-kun. Yeah Acha. Can we sleep like this only? Chapter 33. Higo Takami, otherwise known as Hawks was in front of a jail cell. Hello senpai, he said nonchalantly as he sat in front of Kaina. Hello Kigo, said Lady Nagan sitting in front of him on the other side of the glass panel. So I heard you have only two more years left, said Hawks. Yes, it has been seven years, said Hawks with a sense of nostalgia. Yes, said Kaina. I kin to miss you senpai. So I get to the point Kigo. You and I both know that I can tell you re here for something, she said. Well not really. I mean I want to say I am not curious about some stuff, but I really missed you senpai, said Hawks seriously. Not a ship though comment if you want this to be a ship. I personally incline towards Hawks x Fayumi, but then it s not set in stone. Nice to know, she said with a smile. So how are you doing? Asked Hawks. Recently, rather well, she replied. Oh? What happened? He asked confused. Well, I just found out that there is still hope for the future, she replied. Really? I thought you had lost it all, said Hawks jokingly. Haha, really funny. But really, I think the future is going to be in good hands, she said with a slight smile, something Hawks hadn't seen in a long time, and he looked at her in awe. As much as you're re-looking really cute, why are you looking at me like that? Asked Kaina. Well, I am seeing you smile after years, and you look really good with a smile, he replied. Thanks, Kigo, she said. However I know you didn't tea kill him. Why did you take the responsibility? Asked Hawks. Well you're not wrong. I'll just say, the people who I was with in that dungeon, very interesting. Take care of them, said Kaina. Even the ear anchor. Especially the ear anchor. Izuku woke up at around 5 a.m., only to feel a weight on his chest. Huh? He huffed as he saw Achako's face on his chest, facing him as she slept. That's so cute he thought as removed his hand from around her waist and gently lifted her to get up. Okay what for breakfast? He muttered as he looked through his shelf. He finally decided to settle on fish soup and grilled cheese sandwich and prepared to make it. It takes about an hour, but the time I have to be there is only for about half the time. I can squeeze in the warm-up and sit-ups, thought Izuku as he cut the vegetables. Finally done with the preparations, he started to do his exercises. At around 6 a.m., Achako woke up to find her on the sofa. Huh? 
Where am I? What am I doing? I, 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 as she thought as she remembered the events of the previous night. She turned only to see a sweaty Azuku doing push ups on three fingers. Just three. Three freaking fingers. His t shirt was loose, so she could see a few of his abs. Now they weren't too much, but they were enough for Ichako to become flustered as she quickly got down and shoved her face into the sofa. Acha, are you awake? asked Izuku, sensing the sudden movement. Yeah, she muttered. Good. Breakfast will be ready in a few minutes, so brush and bathe if you want to. I'll make the sandwich fresh just before eating, said Izuku as he finished his 100 push ups, previously completing 100 sit ups and some warm ups. Wow, you work out a lot, said Ichako, seeing that his t shirt was drenched in sweat. Yeah, it is part of the routine, he said as he took out his school books. Huh? You study in the morning? She asked confused. Well, you see, you shouldn't tea immediately bathe after working out, so I study while cooling down. Since I have to do training, work, cooking, and all that I have to make use of every bit of time I get, said Izuku. You work hard, she said in awe. Thanks, Acha, he said with a chuckle. Ichako got up, kissed him, and walked towards the bathroom, leaving Izuku in a daze. WTF just happened. A few moments later, Izumi and Ichako were sitting across him on the dining table as Izuku served them the soup, and boy did it look good. Ichako, who never had a chance to eat anything expensive until recently due to the money she got from dungeons, was in awe of the food in front of her. It looked so good trailed off Ichako with stars in her eyes. I know right he makes so tasty stuff which is healthy at the same time it is just awesome. Wow you re awesome Deku-kun she said as she hugged him. I could make something daily for you, offered Izuku. W what no, I don't want to trouble you guys she said with wide eyes. Or she could just stay with you I said Izumi excitedly, and this statement was followed by an awkward silence. And now now, Izumi, staying here will be a little too fast you know. Me and Deku Kunje just got into a relationship, muttered Ichako embarrassed. Wait would you both didnt tell me that yelled Izumi as she grabbed both of their hands. W wait, so you didn't he know? She asked confused. Yeah, I was talking about the guest room, our house has four bedrooms. It is rare to find such houses here, but since we had space I offered this. But you didnt tell me you started dating my brother. I swear it all happened last night after you fell asleep, said Ichako defending herself. Oh, but still, you could take the guest room, said Izumi. Well it is still very early Izumi. It could lead to a lot of awkwardness, plus we don't know how her parents would feel about it. But Acha, just so you know, you can always just come here, I do love that. Meanwhile, since my house is on the way to the station, you could always just stop by to eat with us, he pointed out. Hey, do you guys really want that? Asked Ichako, a little emotional. Of course you live alone so I am pretty sure you do prefer having breakfast with us right? And I do also like to have you around what about you brother? Said Izumi excitedly. I am down with anything she wants, he replied to his sister as he patted her on her head. T thank you Deku-kun, though now it really feels like I am taking advantage of you, she said tearing up. Hey that's not like that said Izuku. But still I want to do something in return. I can T just weigh you down, said Ichako. You are T weighing me down, I really like cooking and everything Acha. But still you do too much and I don't want to just depend on you, she said determinedly. But that's alright Acha, said Izuku. <coughs> then mouthed to her, just take care of my sister, that s enough. Chapter 34. It was 3 p.m., and Izuku, Kaminari, and Ichigo met at Dagaba Beach, still in their school uniform. Izuku had asked Bakugo, but he declined saying that he needed to do some things alone, so he was going to do dungeons on his own. Sakumo opted to accompany him, saying that it would be better to raid dungeons alongside at least one trustworthy person who knew how to fight. Right now, Ichigo had multiple snakes coming out of his hand as they grabbed stuff and lifted them. Kaminari was using his electricity to blitz around the beach carrying big and small stuff, and Izuku was lifting the biggest stuff without any problem. Izuku had told them both about his shadow abilities a few minutes earlier, earning a shocked expression from the Machako found out the day before during the date, along with Izumi. So all the while, Igris and the mages were separating the junk into multiple categories, including those for recycling, those to be destroyed, and those that could be used to make something. Aminari was somewhat good at anything that used his quirk including radio waves, which he could use to send out a message in Morse code which he learned, making and disassembling simple devices. Along with that, he was extremely good with computers, as his mentor had made him learn how to hack and black hack, i.e., immediately trace and identify a hacker. Ichigo was good at almost all technical stuff. He had extensive tech knowledge like Izuku and was very good at precision work. As for Izuku, he was good at technical things and was decent in hacking as per Kaminari, but his greatest strength lied in his analytical strength. You could call it like a second quirk or a hidden quirk, but he could analyze and almost immediately point out weaknesses and rectifications in almost anything. From Kaminari's codes to Ichigo's blueprints, he improved them all by a large margin. 
So after the cleaning, Ichigo and Izuku would head to Ichigo's house to work with the blueprints and use the stuff they collected that day. Aminari would have accompanied them, but he was going to meet Kaioka. Hey sorry, I just got a girlfriend, so I really want to spend some time with her, said Kaminari with a sweat drop. Wait you got a girlfriend? Asked Ichigo with a surprised look. Well, me too muttered Izuku as Ichigo's face turned into one of horror. So I am thr only single guy. Ichigo and Izuku were working on a visor that would give them an inbuilt display, communication, even when signals are jammed. Dude you're talking about using a quantum entangled particle. First of all, how will we even get it? Then the stability factor, then we don't even know how to transmit or read quantum data. Well, entanglement could be done by quantum swapping, and I could get my hands on it somehow, but then, you rewrite, the data is a problem. Then how about minuscule pulses of mana? Like a really small amount in Morse code or a specially encrypted pattern. Well, that could be done boo. Ichigo, brother. Ah what happened Yayoi Rozu-san and Mi-chan? Asked a startled Izuku. One of our friend's family was really burdened by loans, and to pay it off, he is going in a dungeon, said Izumi panting. So I don't see a problem? Asked Izuku. His quirk is a C rank, he hasn't awakened yet, and the dungeon he is going in is a low B rank, said Momo out of breath. But where? Asked Ichigo, knowing fully well the horrors of dungeons. Even for three A ranks, i.e., him, Izuku, and Kaminari, it took a while to take down a C rank boss. Well, with Hawk's agency S raid. They were four members short so they put out an ad. They needed a porter and 3 D rank or above, so he applied. Well if Hawk's guild is involved, it s not something to worry about too much, but we ll go just in case, said Ichigo as he went in to get some stuff. Izumi, I d suggest you stay here or with a chako alright, said Izuku. Why brother? Even if it takes the whole night, it s not like I have t spent time alone, she said. Well yeah, but still said Izuku. His guts were telling him that something bad was going to happen. He didn't t want to put Izumi in danger. So the safest place would be with Momo, who he trusted after talking for a long time, her Ichako, because a, she was strong. Like really really strong. Her hand to hand, her quirk control, her overall combat strength was on par with the likes of Bakugo and himself. Keep in mind that since she has been clearing dungeons, she has a lot of combat experience. Ichigo and Izuku were with a team, looking for the boy Izumi had mentioned. And Izuku didn't t miss the slight blush on her face while she talked about him. Who is this guy? Is he a good guy? As he looked around, he saw the boy that fit Izumi's description, and well, he was impressed. The boy he found in front of him was lean, athletic, and had a sword in his hand. Not that I am something exceptional in using swords he asked Captain, but I'll test him later, thought Izuku with interest. Hey, are you Kajimaru Masamune? Asked Ichigo. Oh uh, yeah, why? He asked nervously. Well, I am Izumi's brother and he asked my friend. We heard you were going into a B-rank dungeon, said Izuku sternly. W will my family s being threatened by lone sharks, so I I had to do this, he muttered, scared of Izuku, now even more due to him being Izumi's big brother. He ch well, I guess we can t do much. But we ll be going in with you, and after this, we re going to have a talk with those lone sharks, said Izuku as he looked at Ichigo. Yeah, I ll ask father to look into it, and I think Kaminari could also help, since you know he told us his teacher was an extremely strong guy, said Ichigo. Yeah. Though he never told us who. At a restaurant at the Tokyo International Airport, a brown-haired guy was having ramen. A ah, good bowl of ramen always fills me up, he said as he finished the twelfth bowl. Hey is that the S-rank hunter night watch? No way, why would Steve Ray be here? He s an Indian hunter. Yeah, but he is also the head of Hellfire Corporation, so maybe he s here for some business. Really? I want his autograph. I need to get out of here. Chapter 35 Izuku was talking to the official conducting the raid. Isn't he at a bit of an overkill to bring an A rank and 10 B ranks to a low B rank 8? Asked Izuku. His danger senses were tingling, and he had learned that he should never ignore it. Well, it does, however, our A rank hunter has recently been promoted to A rank after he was reawakened. That is why we want to start with low B rank ones, said the official. Right, what is this feeling? He and Ichigo made eye contact with each other, and he saw that Ichigo was feeling the same way. So Masamune, what is your quirk? Asked Izuku. W well it's analytic mimicry he replied. Who the hell named it that? Asked Izuku with his right eye twitching. It was a stupid name. I did but in my defense, copycat, copy, record, and others were taken, he timidly replied. So what does it do? Asked Ichigo, trying to defuse the situation. He had never seen Izuku being so hostile. Okay he did, when Izuku and Kaminari came to his party. He clearly remembered Izuku's warning about his sister. Why is H Wade's sister blushed while talking about him, thought Ichigo as he pieced things together. 
but I can analyze and copy anyone's fighting style and to some extent awaken powers, as long as it's simple conversions of mana and dosen T require a special body type or power, said Masanyun. So what all do you have? Asked Ichigo. I can make a little fire, a little ice, thanks to Todoroki-san, then I can shoot wind blasts, and I can shoot my nails, though they don't grow at the same rate as the person s from who I copied. Well, obviously the copied power is not as strong as the originals, since I don't copy the power itself, rather I understand its concept, and then use my body to mimic it as much as I can, he said as he went on a small mumbling spree, of course, nothing near as Uku's, but intriguing nonetheless. Their quirk is really interesting. I d say it's a beer rank or a low air rank in all but mana. But you can work on that. Anyways, we re here to help you out here, said Izuku. Oh oh thank you, he said with a nervous smile. The more I am talking to him, the more I find this guy likable. Hamizumi made a great choice. Izumi was talking to Momo. Well, I'll be fine, since I have contacted Achako. She's big bro's girlfriend and I'll be pretty fine with her, she said. Right. Still, if you want anything just call, said Momo. Right senpai, she replied with a bright smile. On the Tokyo airport, another S-rank hunter had just landed, and his name was Samui Hagen. He was the brother of Akihiko Hagen, the person Izuku killed in the dungeon. The atmosphere sure is different. I ended up visiting here earlier than expected, he said with a grin. Yuri here, behind Samui, Yakimiru Mera was standing glaring at him. Ah look who is here. What business does association hunter Yakimiru Mera have here? He asked with a taunting smile. It is only natural for a monitoring department hunter to receive and observe an S-rank hunter, he replied bowing mildly. So Yuri's still working with that mouse and that old geezer. If it was up to me, I'd cut off his right hand, so he'd completely depend on me and then manipulate everything from behind the scenes. So what brings an S-rank hunter here in Japan? Some business, he replied. An S-rank hunter who has denounced his nation and settled in the US has business here. Does it perhaps include Hunter Midoriya, Hunter Kaminari, and Hunter Yaoi Rozu? Asked Mara with a smirk. Dust Hunter Midoriya. Yeoi Rozu is a prominent name, so even for me at LLB very inconvenient to do anything to him, his parents are crazy rich. Kaminari is a bastard who I can deal with any time. As for Midoriya, let us just say what happens in a dungeon remains in a dungeon. And I don't know if a bunch of thieves break into some random house belonging to a greenhead and accidentally kill the only girl there, that d just be a coincidence, Samui said with a maniacal grin. Should I need to alert the association to send protection for Izumi Midoriya he thought as he brought out his phone. Ah 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 we don't want to ruin the fun, do we? It's not like you can do anything, I am an American S rank and there will be no proof to connect me to that, said Samui. I am merely informing the agency about your arrival, said Mara through gritted teeth. Kaminari was enjoying his day with Jiru at her house when he got a message. Hunter Kaminari, this is Hunter Association member Mara here. Hunter Midoriya's sister is in extreme danger, I'd prefer it if you could go to his place. I am trying to contact the association, but it seems like someone from the inside is working with Samui, who is trying to kill the survivor of the C-rank dungeon you, along with the other two cleared. Colors drained from his face as he read the message. What happened? Asked Jiru, confused. Remember I told you about the C-rank dungeon incident? Asked Kaminari. I do, and it's not your foul. Oh I mean I know, but here, said Kaminari as he showed his phone to her. What? I have to go I'll see you tomorrow, said Kaminari. But it's dange. Sorry, I can't do anything just don't go outside, I don't know whether they LL come after me or not. And don't bother contacting the police, they can't do anything here due to the restrictions. I'll find a hero and ask him to do something, said Kaminari panicking. Let me come with yo. Io, please, you can't. This is my mess, said Kaminari. Stop cutting me off and your mess is my mess too in case you forgot I am your girlfriend. Sorry but Jiru, you don't have much combat experience and neither do you have permission to use quirk, said Kaminari. Neither do you, she replied with a raised eyebrow. Not exactly. Why well, you know what, leave quickly. We can t waste time arguing. Fine, I want t come with you, but I'll try to contact a hero, she said with a sigh, and Kaminari shot her a thankful look. I love you Kayo, he said as he gave her a quick kiss on the lips and then bolted out using his quirk. Now where is Ectoplasm S number? Everyone was entering the dungeon, with Izuku being the last, just behind Masamune. As soon as he took a step inside, he felt a great disturbance, as his eyes widened. The dimensions are fluctuating the sensation it's too ominous I need to get out, thought Izuku before stopping himself. I can't leave them here. But I need to tell that outside, I'll inform them and then come in again. However, Izuku found himself unable to exit. Outside, the gate had started to turn red, as Izuku's head came out. Call the main attack force immediately he yelled as he was shot back into the gate. Chief what should we do about this? Asked an official. 
This is a red gate we we need to call Hunter Harrowhawks immediately. Ox had just returned from a patrol, he had cleared three dungeons and caught a bunch of thieves and was tired as hell when he received a call from his recruitment and training cell chief. This better be important, grumbled a tired Hawks as he picked the call up. What? A red gate a rank reading. I am coming. Get me the list of participants and a coffee, I'll be there in a few minutes. Chapter 36. Nice car, said Samui sitting in the backseat of Mara's car. But S still not appropriate enough to escort an S rank hunter, said Mara, driving at a slow speed. On one hand, he wanted to immediately rush to Musatafu to protect Izuku's sister, but he knew even if they reached there on time, Samui won't let him go anywhere. Wade Hunter Kaminari is the protege of Steve Ray, the Indian national rank hunter hero, who arrived here earlier. Maybe I have told Hunter Kaminari about the situation, and I also sent multiple messages explaining the situation. Maybe it's not that bad. Even if you're here, how will you find out where Hunter Midoriya is? Asked Mara. I already did at the airport before exiting. He is at a dungeon in Musatafu, he replied. But you know Mara, at this speed, I do reach there faster by running, he said. And the rules in dungeons are different, as you already know. Whether I bury them or not is none of your business. Where are we? This doesnt look like a dungeon. Even the gate has disappeared. I don't feel anything suspicious. From what I felt, this is probably a red gate. That means we re-stuck here. As per the official, this gate was found five days earlier, and that means that this is at least five days old. But LL take two more days to break, and as per the studies, a day here is an hour outside, so we have to survive in here for roughly 48 days to get help when the dungeon breaks, or kill the boss and get out, thought Izuku. Looks like Professor Shield's lessons are helping. Usually, I'd be thinking about useless things. We have to survive for 48 days or kill the boss to get out, he told Ichigo and Masamune. Al Ichigo stopped when he heard something cutting through the air. Ichigo quickly developed a tortoise shell and hard scales to protect himself, while Izuku grabbed the arrow aimed for Kajimaru. However, the second arrow found its mark, instantly killing a sea ranker. Should I selves? I self. That is the name common people knew these creatures by. However, for those hunters who had encountered them before, this was hypocritical. They were nothing like the beautiful and friendly elves from fairy tales. They were ruthless hunters. They were Hayaki. Izuku's eyes widened as he realized that they were too far for him to sense them. Hawks was in front of the gate, trying to break the barrier. How many people are in there? Asked Hawks, frustrated. One A rank and ten B rank from our guild, sir. Additionally, there are six C rank from our guild too, he said. DCH. This gate seems high B rank at least. Who the hell thought this to be a low B rank? Asked Hawks. Sir, the hero commission had assessed it, said the official there. DCH. If it is a high A rank, then those inside are as good as dead. Sir, there are also three people who had responded to the request. A porter and two support, said the official. Rank. The porter was E rank, and the other two were both D rank students, he said. You let children in a B rank. Sir, we were short three members, the official said timidly. Names, said Hawks with a sigh as he once again tried to break the dungeon wall. Izuku Midoriya, Ichigo Yayoi Rozu, and Kajimaru Masamune, said the official. Izuku Midoriya. They easily managed to single out the least skilled people of our squad. A few months ago, it would have been me. But now let the hunt begin. The elves had seemingly got the message, as one of them pointed at Izuku and then slid his finger across his throat. I'll kill you myself, thought Izuku glaring at it. The next moment the elves disappeared. I don't know how much you all understand the situation, but we can't return unless we either die or clear the dungeon. We re inside a red gate, said the Arank. Red gate. Midoriya-san, do you know what that is? Asked Kajimaru. It is a special gate which traps hunters inside. You have to clear the dungeon to exit. Either that or you have to wait till dungeon break. And the thing is, an hour out there is a whole day here. So in short, we re-stranded, explained Izuku. The responsibility for your survival is on me. This gate is at least a high B rank, and in such dangerous places, it is difficult to manage a large number of people, so we LL be splitting up, the A rank said, and Izuku's eyes widened. If we stay here, we LL either die of cold or get ambushed. So even if no one wants to come with me, I LL go and clear the dungeon alone. So who wants to come with me? A lot of people walked forward, murmuring about clearing the dungeon together. They think that they LL have a better chance of survival by sticking with Airank Hunter, thought Izuku as he saw Airanker deny any C ranker. I cannot take dead weight with me, he reasoned, as one B rank asked to switch to stick with C rank and below. Ox was still racking his brain to find a way to break the red gate when a car pulled over. Oh ho ho, if it isn't Tyreed Wing S Hawks, came a voice as Hawks' eyes widened. That voice Samui Hagen thought Hawks as he turned. Why is the precious owner of Reed Wing Guild here? Hagen what is an American hunter doing back in Japan? He asked as his feathers started to surround them. 
I stopped by to manage some business, but I didn't expect to see you here, he said with a grin. Just answer the question. What is your business in Red Wing Gildas area? You are in TNE rank, are you? Asked the girl. Let me ask you a question first. How are you guys so calm for new recruits? Asked Izuku. The first thing we retaught is that anything can happen inside a dungeon. That way there leads to the forest. We must separate now, said the air rank, and they wished each other luck before parting. You never answered my question. Aminari was running full speed when he saw Shoto walking from the opposite direction. Aminari, what is the matter? Asked Shoto, stopping a panting Kaminari. Aminari just showed him the message as Shoto's eyes widened. Let us go. Ox was just wondering why everyone was talking about this Izuku Midoriya, while Samui was ranting about how he couldn't t kill him, when everyone at the site felt a huge pressure on themselves, even Hawks and Samui were sweating. D that pressure it's no normal s rank. This can only be of the national rank hunter. The next moment, Steve walked casually on the scene, with his hands in his pocket. However, he was emitting an aura powerful enough to scare away anyone and anything. I heard that an s rank is on the hunt for my student and his friends. Is it true, Samui Hagen? Chapter 37 Samui Hagen was now worried. Right now, he was in presence of a fellow S rank and a bucking national rank, but he wouldn't show that he was worried. Ah, Steve Ray India S number 2 hero, the youngest person to become a hero at the age of 13, the youngest to reach top 10 at 15, and number 2 at 16. One of the national ranks. Why are you number 2 again? Asked Samui, as if taunting him. Because the number 1 is a person with a magical ass and is more than twice my age. Why are we discussing this? I asked a question. Nah, I am here just to witness the prowess of the E rank hunter Izuku Midoriya, he said sarcastically. Right, so why don't I drop you off at the airport from where you take a flight back to the US and get out of here in two hours? Unless you want to see the prowess of a national rank hunter? He asked with a glare. Steve Ray. The new brightest fragment of brilliant light. Quirk no traditional quirk. However, like the rest of the 20%, he also had a dormant quirk, called Endure. This quirk allows the user to permanently enhance his physical and mana capabilities using pain. To unlock this quirk, a person has to endure enough pain to be pushed to the brink of suicide. Steve jumped to air rank as soon as he unlocked this power. You guys must be wondering that what caused this to happen right? Well Steve Ray is an Indo-American hero, with his father being Indian. Three months after he was born, his parents met a car crash dying on the spot. From the hospital, an orphanage took him in. The only thing was, this was for all the potentially quirkless kids, determined by illegal x-ray scans of pinky toe. The owners basically tortured the quirkless, and it was there he unlocked his quirk. Are you threatening me? Asked Samui. Nah, just an offer you might want to take unless you plan to have beef with a national rank hunter, he said. Auntie be too cocky, Yuri's still a kid, said Samui. Yeah, no. I just turned 18 this year, so I am technically an adult. And as for being cocky, I am not. It is just that I've cleared enough dungeons that you'd never be able to in your next seven lives. And I've got a record of defeating 100 enemies using one single move, all A rank and above. I am pretty sure you wouldn't want to be on the receiving end, would you? He asked as the air around them started to swirl. Steve's awakened power elemental genesis. Gives the ability to control and generate fire, water, lightning, earth, and wind. He has developed and combined these five basic elements to further get lava, ice, and steam. This is getting too windy, thought Samui as he looked at Steve. What are you doing? Asked Samui. Me? Nothing. I think it is the wind acting up, said Steve with a smirk as Samui felt something on his cheek. Huh? As he put his hand to check it, he felt something liquid. Is that my blood? Samui's left cheek now had an inch long gash. Not too deep, but threatening still. Wow, never thought wind could hurt someone, said Steve innocently. These are the famous wind blades of his, famed to be able to penetrate even air ank shields. He killed a rapist using this and giving him over 1,000 cuts all over the body. How powerful is he? I castrated him, said Steve. Huh? The villain you're rethinking about. Is he a din? Reading my mind. No, Steve wasn't he reading his mind. He was just smart enough to figure out this. He knew that everyone's first thoughts after seeing this power of his went to that incident. It was quite a controversy, after all. As for reading my mind, he could just play it off as him thinking Samui was trying to read his mind in case Samui wasn't he actually thinking that. However, Samui was, and Steve had just been successful in intimidating and breaking any fighting spirit in Samui. Alright, I'll just h head to the airport, said Samui as he quickly sat in Mara's car. Sir, Midori's sister is in danger, said Mara before rushing in the car with a smug grin. Achako had just entered the house with Izumi when she felt something was wrong. Izumi, stay behind me, she whispered as she took a defensive stance. 
they both slowly and vigilantly walked towards the room when Ichako's instincts jumped in and she barely caught nearly invisible opponent. Without wasting any time, she flipped whoever attacked her onto the stomach and punched him really hard knocking the air out of him. She heard something cutting through the air and immediately ducked with Izumi behind the counter of the open kitchen. Another guy entered the room as he had a flamethrower in his hand. Achako quickly took a knife from the counter and threw it in his left leg, and then she threw the ladle, while increasing its weight to ten times, hitting him straight in the head, knocking him out. She once again heard the same sound as she saw a big needle, about the length of her finger embed in the wall next to her. She quickly jumped over the counter taking cover from the sofa, as the person shot another needle which seemed to come out of his wrist. She grabbed onto the sofa as she made herself weightless. She noticed that after every needle he needed a 5 second break before he shot another needle, so as soon as another needle was shot, she quickly jumped onto the ceiling and made her wait twice, while axe kicking the person, who brought his left hand to stop her, only to hear a loud crunch indicating a broken arm. Ah you bucking bitch he yelled only for Ichako to grab his tongue and pull very very painfully. Language there is a kid here she said sweetly as she pulled harder to the point that his tongue started to bleed. Izumi screamed to warn her about something, but it was too late as a blur hit her in the back of her head, almost knocking her out. However, she was able to touch whoever that person was at the last moment, increasing the gravity on him by 10, causing him to fall through the ground onto the floor below. Luckily, the flat below them was still vacant. Ichako grabbed her head as it started to bleed and released her quirk. Oh Ichako let me h Izumi was cut off as Ichako had jumped in front of her to protect her from the first guy, who was still not knocked out. That guy had shot some sort of sticky glue towards them, but before it could hit them, a wall of ice had come in between them. The next moment, the first guy along with the guy with needle power were both knocked out by a yellow blur, as Shoto literally roasted the fifth thug who had returned from the lower floor. Thank god we weren't too late, said Kaminari with a sigh. Chapter 38 Izuku and Ichigo were leading others inside a forest when the B-rank spoke. I don't think we should go further, she said. Why? Asked Izuku, amused. And T you see. This area is covered with cave bear's marks. This is their territory, she said. So you're saying this area is full of ice bears? Asked Ichigo, amused. Huh? Did I say something wrong? All the more reason to go inside. Here, they're the alphas. These are way more reasonable than those elves, said Izuku looking at her. That's right, she muttered, deep in thought. Rent to you all cold. Here, said Izuku as he handed them coats from the shop. Spatial magic. Only a few can learn how to even cast spells using mana, much less use spatial magic. And even then, they can tea summon more than one or two, muttered one of the hunters as Ichigo smirked, knowing the truth. As for Masamune, he was just staring at Izuku with an open mouth. Who exactly are you? He asked. Well, right now I am someone assigned to protect you. Don't worry, I'll make sure we all make out alive, he said as he patted him on the head, causing Masamune to blush. Not a ship or even anything remotely hexful. Now I know where Izumi gets her personality from he thought as his blush darkened. The next moment, however, a loud roar was heard. They all turned to see an ice bear. Holy shit yelled one of the hunters. Entering the forest was the wrong choice. It is a high-ranked monster. Everyone was panicking as the B rank stood in front of them. ILL create an opening while Yoshi was cut off as Ichigo and Izuku lazily walked towards the bear. Ichigo looked at Izuku with a questioning look and Izuku shrugged as he walked to the bear. What are you doing at S dang? Once again, she was cut off, this time by the pressure Izuku was emitting. Do you want to fight? Izuku's voice sounded extremely threatening, and even the bear was scared, but it still roared in Izuku's face. DCH. Stupid, he said as he jumped up and punched it in the head, causing it to cave in and killed it in one shot. And that s a lot of experience, he muttered as he sat on the top of the bear's head massaging his knuckles. Just who are you? Aminari and Shoto relaxed as they noticed that all the threats were neutralized when a bunch of cloaked figures came inside the room. Everyone minus Kaminari took a defensive position as Kaminari chuckled. Everyone, calm down. It is ectoplasm, he is a hero, said Kaminari as Jiro entered too. Looks like you kids have taken care of all of this, said ectoplasm. Yeah, and as per section 15 of Act 117, usage of quirks is allowed in life-threatening situations for self-defense, said Kaminari as Jiro looked at him, impressed. Officer, I drop kicked that child in self-defense, said Shoto as Kaminari, Achako, and Izumi looked at him in awe. Did you just quote a meme and a sentence of Technoblade? Asked Kaminari. Izuku would be so proud, said Izumi as she wiped fake tears. We're in you kids just attacked by some criminals. Asked Ectoplasm, confused and scared for their mental health. Ectoplasm, sir, I don't know about others, but from what Kaminari told me, these guys have gone through so much together that they re desensitized to such stuff, said Jiro as she deadpanned at the scene. And it was not funny she yelled shutting them all up. What no one noticed was that the guy with the flamethrower was up. 
Like hell you ll take me alive he yelled out of nowhere as he started to glow. What is happening? Asked Shoto as he attempted to shoot the guy with an ice shard only for the ice to melt a few feet away from him. He s going nuclear. He s collecting energy and could kill us. He s suicide bombing said Kaminari as he saw him glow. The next moment, a blue blur was seen, and the guy who was about to explode cold and TV seen anywhere. Two seconds passed and a loud boom could be heard way up in the sky. The next moment, the same blue blur appeared next to Kaminari and stopped glowing. A Steve Kaminari said with a smirk. After dinner, Izuku and Ichigo had done their exercise, yes Ichigo too, he too was an exercise freak like Izuku, Kaminari, Achako, Bakugo, Sakuma well, everyone in this friend circle was exercise freaks. What was impressive was that Ichigo and Sakumo had never met. Anyways, they were in front of a bunch of ice bears, behind which was a much larger ice bear. Hey. You take the larger one, then you can erect arise yeah yeah arise, erect whatever, you can do that to it, said Ichigo. I lil arise everyone one of them, but okay, I am fine with the strongest one, said Izuku. Well, I prefer number, it gives me greater practice for mobility in my shell, said Ichigo. Does develop leg similar to iguana, said Izuku with a shrug. That LL look weird, said Ichigo. Are we in a dungeon or a fashion show? Deadpan Izuku, causing Ichigo to sweat drop. Or you could turn your lower body into a snake's lower half. That would help you move faster, he said. The leader bear had enough as he let out a deafening roar. He ch. We were talking. Igris, arise, said Izuku as a pitch black knight rose up. Focus on your target, Don T. Steel Ichigo S. I want to see what you can do, said Izuku as Igris started walking towards the leader. The bear took a step towards Igris, and the next moment its head was rolling on the ground. That was anticlimactic, said Ichigo with another sweat drop. Finish your enemies or I'll do it for you, said Izuku as he looked at him with an irritated look, but Ichigo could feel the playfulness behind that tone. Chapter 39 So long time no see, said Steve awkwardly, after which Kaminari jumped onto him, hugging him around his neck. You read back after so long he yelled happily as Steve giggled. Sorry, just some villain mobs in Central Africa. The heroes were heavily outnumbered by the criminals there. Yakuza and organized crimes would look nothing in front of that. Me, Shishido, and Canary had to work for over six months relentlessly to bring things under control. Turns out some people from the US, Japan, and back at home in India were using it as a distraction to keep the attention off the illegal drug trade and experiment on Quirkless, said Steve seriously. Oh wait here too? Asked Kaminari. Yeah. Apparently, they were trying to give a Quirkless person a quirk. You know, forced awakening and quirk activation, said Steve. Is that even possible? Asked Ichako. Oh you don't know what all messed up shit is possible, said Steve with a sigh. Yeah. Remember three decades ago a person trying to kill the previous UK Prime Minister by sending a girl with mutant quirk armed with a bomb when he voiced his support for those with mutant quirk, said Kaminari. Okay okay let us not talk about depressing shit, said Shoto with wide eyes. Right sorry said Steve with wide eyes as he bit his tongue. So are you guys injured? Asked Ectoplasm while mentally facipoming. Achako S got hit on the head with a pole, said Izumi. She was a little shaken up, but after seeing the interaction of Steve and Kaminari, she felt lighter. Plus not much could happen if you had a national rank hunter with you. Alright, I'll deal with these dipshits, said Steve as he disappeared in a blue flash. In the next moments, all the thugs also disappeared. Yeah by dealing with them, he means he'll mentally torture into confessing why they were here, Kaminari said with a sweat drop. Three days had gone inside the dungeon, and the sea rank and below were peacefully eating when the air anchor arrived there. Just what has happened? They are low rank hunters. Warm clothes, food, blankets, tents, and everything. If my hands were in tea frozen, no, if my stomach was full I could have easily fraught off the high aki. They kept all this to themselves. These guys. You buckers yelled getting the attention of everyone. Hey Kashi-san how are you here? Asked one of the sea rank. My attack force was wiped out due to lack of food and equipment how do you have all these supplies? That s. What? Got your mouth sewed. I don't see you all as accomplices. Who hid all these supplies? I'll let you all go if you tell me the culprit. I am talking to the culprit who has all these supplies and let his comrades die. Shit muttered Massimune. 1, 2, the B ranker must be the one. Why would she volunteer to stay with C rankers unless she has some plot? You are the culprit. 3, 4, came a voice from behind him as the next moment he was hit on the back of his head, sending him into the snow. Captain, the A ranker looked up to see Izuku looking at him with a glare. Who was the one that left his comrades to die? Came another voice, belonging to Ichigo who was on his right. And most of all started Izuku. You brought dead weight, both of them said together. What dead weight? Asked one of the C ranker. You can undo your stealth. It is pointless with your immense strength, said Izuku as he turned to them. As he said that, the ice elves undid their stealth, and Izuku chuckled. What a chilling energy, he said. 
Dude, stop with dad jokes, said Ichigo while trying to choke in the chuckle. What? That was clever. Ice, chilling. Come on, said Izuku. Others were flabbergasted. There were dozens of ice elves in front of them, and they were joking like this. You must be the leader, said Izuku, getting serious. They both are the ones. The useful ones amongst trash, said the elf. What? Did you just call us trashes? Asked Ichigo and Izuku together. You both know our language. Wait I can talk to you once again, they both said together. Wait you can talk to them? They both said pointing at each other. Wait why are we talking in sync? They both wondered you guessed it, together. Others by now were confused whether to laugh or to cry at what was going on. But seriously, for me, I guess it is my awakened power. I guess the system is letting me understand. But what about you? Asked Izuku, confused. I guess my quirk along with letting myself transform into parts of reptiles also allows me to talk to them. You know there were reports of those with mutant quirk listening voices in dungeons. Maybe it was this only, said Ichigo. Inside one for all, everyone was looking at Sung Jin Wu. What? I ain't no Wikipedia he whined. But Yuri a god. Said Nana trying to convince him. Yuri lucky Yuri cute, deadpan Jin Wu before turning to others leaving a blushing mess of Nana behind. Not a ship again that is the typical reaction of any girl who db called cute by Sung Jin Wu. I mean any straight girl. So I guess that since the quirks are different than normal awakenings since it is genetic, you may or may not develop the ability to understand the chaos language since it is genetic rather than acquired. I don't know, it comes with the mana, said Jin Wu. Right said everyone except Banjo. What does that mean? Asked Banjo. Leave it, blockhead, you prepare to meet the ninth. It is about time, said the first jokingly. You bit, the sea rankers and below were scared. What was happening? There was an army of Hayaki in front of them and they were discussing what? How they could understand them. To be able to converse, how splendid. There is someone I want to introduce, he said pointing at the elf beside him. The elf was the one who Izuku had seen before. You are already acquaintances. He is the one that told us that there is someone strong amongst humans. He wanted to face off with one of you, so he was cut off with Izuku cutting the head off of that elf. The leader looked at Izuku and then grinned evilly. You are one interesting guy. But as for Izuku, he was in some other realm. You have leveled up. Name Izuku Midoriya level 40. Job Necromancer Fatigue 0. Idol the Chosen 1 plus 2 others. HP 36100. MP 5910. Strength 63. Vitality 60. Agility 56. Intelligence 56. Sense 45. Remaining points 0. 1 for all skill unlocked. Black Whip. Looks like 9th is here, said a bold guy who stood in front of Izuku. Chapter 40. Where am I? Asked Izuku as he looked around, getting in a defensive stance. Calm down kid. Yuri inside one for all, said Banjo as he stood in front of him with arms crossed. Inside one for all? Asked Izuku confused. Yes the only thing you can be inside of he yelled jokingly. Now before anyone says anything, the encounters with the vestiges are going to be different since Izuku's personality is different. He is already pretty hardened and has kinda the same sense of humor as Banjo and has the same hip as him, so yeah. And I am tweaking their personality as per plot. Hey, I have a girlfriend not that I did do you know so soon. I am too young to be inside anything now who the hell are you? Yelled Izuku, embarrassed. Haha I was joking kid. But I am Dagoro Banjo, the fifth user of One For All he said proudly. I didn't he know that mentally deranged lame dudes were also the users of One For All, said Izuku. Hey shut up kid I am awesome, what you going to do old man? Asked Izuku jokingly. As I pointed out in the starting, Izuku in this book has been sassier and cheekier than the anime in manga. That is only increased after getting the power. I'm ah going to kill ya puny ass, oh yeah? Wanna go? Asked Izuku as they both locked their eyes with sparks flying in between them. Then both of them started grinning. I like you kid, said Banjo laughing. I don't swing that way, said Izuku with a smirk. Ah, you little shit, said Banjo. Ah, yeah, said Izuku finger gunning him. Yeah, you did. I am Loki proud. What a great successor, said Banjo as he wiped manly tears. Thanks. So what is happening? Asked Izuku. Well, you see, up until now. One for all was getting crystallized as that buffoon told you, said Banjo. Auntie call all might buffoon yelled Izuku with a pout. Yeah. Buck off kid, ill call him whatever I want to, oh yeah. You wanna go? Yelled Izuku as Izuku got in form. Banjo then remembered how well versed Izuku was in analyzing his opponent's fighting style and how he had way more power as he was four generations ahead. Never mind. Anyways, as that not buffoon told you, one for all is the crystallization of power. However, there is one thing. It is not just quirks. Our quirks along with a copy of our conscious is also transferred from one user to another, said Banjo. Wow, that s that s crazy. So what have yo wait did you say quirks? Asked Izuku. Yes. And that brings us to the current topic. 
You have unlocked my quirk, Black Whip, said Banjo proudly. That s that s so awesome, said Izuku with stars in his eyes as he ran up to him. Yeah. So here s the thing. With 20% of one for all, you have also unlocked Black Whip. Soon, you ll unlock more quirks, said Banjo. Wow, said Izuku as he looked around for his notebook only to remember that he was in his mindscape. Ah, you stupid, said Banjo laughing heartily. Hey anyways, what have you all been doing all this time? Asked Izuku. Oh well we went through your memories, and we've even been watching your world from your eyes. Whatever you see, we can see too, said Banjo. Oh cool, wait, whatever. Asked Izuku, now fearing for his privacy. Ah ha don't you worry, we've e got better things to do than watching you pee, poop or jerk or have wet dreams about your girlfriend, said Banjo teasingly. WTF I don't jerk, you didn't deny the dreams, you ve got an unfunny, lame, and dirty sense of humor, I mean, I wasn't here wrong. That kind of sense of humor died a long time ago, don't be salty Izuku, ayo back off I ve already been embarrassed enough, you still haven't denied the dreams a degrees a degrees, shut up, so anyway, back to the chapter. Excuse me, I am quite funny, said Banjo. Nope. But anyway, I need to go. If you remember, I ve got an elf on my throat, said Izuku. Right. My time s almost up too. Remember that your quirk and awakened power both have many secrets. And kid don't he ever change. The elf leader was smiling with glee. Yes, he did lose one of his best soldiers, but he had also found a strong opponent. It will be fun to fight you, he said with an evil smile. You're an amusing guy. Here s a proposal. Hand over those people behind you and I'll let you live a little longer, he said. Ivy got a question. Why do you want to kill us humans? Asked Izuku. Why? Because we read beings of chaos. We want to kill. We have that bloodlust that forces us to kill humans. No, not force us. We willingly kill humans, he said with the same evil smirk. Now man readers note this, since they're not let loose by rulers for thinning out the crowd, so they don't glitch as they did in Manla. However, they're all still influenced by the spirit of the monarchs, so they want to kill humans. Izuku growled as he shot at him with his sword materializing in his hand. Thanks for the proposal, but kindly buck off, said Izuku as both their weapons clashed. Yuri stupid, said the elf leader, pissing Izuku off. Why is everyone calling me stupid today? He groaned. You think you can go against our number? Asked the elf as his army stood beside him. Talking about numbers said Izuku as the three mages, eight normal-sized ice bears, a giant ice bear, and Igris materialized behind him. You were saying? Asked Izuku with a smirk. Now while well, Izuku's soldiers were fewer, they were ice bears and mages. Even for a bunch of elves dealing with an ice bear would be difficult. And the ice bear that led them was way bigger than others. And then, there was Igris. He had this aura around him that told everyone not to buck with him. While all of them were taking this in, they were hit by yet another wave of power, as Ichigo was surrounded by a green aura. The aura is the activation of his awakened power. Most air ank and above have that around them when they completely let loose. Did why all forget me? Asked Ichigo with a raised eyebrow and a smirk. Others found this pretty cool, but as for Izuku, in his mind, the way he spoke was reminding him of Banjo. He was just so obnoxious. Izuku pushed these thoughts out of his mind as he turned to the leader of elves. So, you were saying something about numbers. Chapter 41, so what is your opinion? Asked the first. They had just stopped laughing at Banjo and Izuku's banter and were watching the fight. Well, with Black Whip, his own skills, one for all, and all the perks, he is definitely going to win, said the fourth. Well, I am not sure, said Sung Jin Woo. Huh? Well, I needed to get the air and kill to battle that monster. But then, he has stronger than I was at that time. He has pissed, he has an S rank quirk of which he can use power worthy of B rank, then he has got the system, which allows him high air rank power right now, and then his own quirk, along with an S rank weapon. The person in front of him on the other hand is an air rank monster. Very pretty even, said Sung Jin Woo. Well as you said he has pretty pissed off. I am a good judge of character, and let me tell you, from what I saw and I gathered while talking to him, you don't want him to be pissed, said Banjo as he looked onto the battle. Izuku and the elf leader were staring at each other. Igris, Ichigo, whatever happens, don't interrupt in my and his battle. He has mine to slay, said Izuku as he glared at the elves, activating his bloodlust, along with releasing his natural killing intent. The next moment Igris and Ichigo were radiating their own killing intent, and others who were there were scared shitless. As long as I slay enough, said Ichigo as his hands morphed into a bunch of snakes which took bites into many elves, quickly activating his awakened power, causing them to bleed heavily. Igris took charge as he led the bears towards a faction of elves. What was noteworthy was that Ichigo was slaying way better than even Igris, and Izuku was low-key impressed. Izuku as of right now was a lot stronger than Igris, but Ichigo had been growing along with him, and so was Kaminari. 
Alright, I can t let these guys get stronger, muttered Izuku with a satisfactory grin before turning to the elf leader. My name is Baruka, he said as he sneered. What is yours? Izuku dashed towards him as he stood face to face with him. Izuku Midoriya, he said as Baruka kept smiling. The next moment their swords clashed as Baruka used his free hand to try to attack Izuku, who just kicked him where the sun doesn't shine, causing Baruka to double over. That was below the belt, I do whatever I want to, you should have thought before trying to fight me, said Izuku as he almost chopped his arms off. Oh? Yuri the one to talk, Yuri trying to use your frost ability to freeze me or inhibit my movement, said Izuku as Baruka smiled, you guessed it, evilly. I know right. They re so predictable. Pure evil, unlike the love or like the Akatsuki. There is just not much to describe them. IV seriously started to cringe at the word evil, just due to the number of times IV written it. Yuri more perceptive than I thought, said Baruka as he stood up. And your anatomy is more similar to those of humans than I thought, said Izuku as he stared at him with a borderline taunting smirk. But then, Yuri just a kid. Easy to kill, the elf said. Izuku disappeared and appeared next to him with his hand on Baruka's face, this time actually surprising him as he slammed him onto the ground. Baruka tried to scratch his hand with his dagger while falling, but Izuku spun on his foot and kicked him in the stomach just as he bounced up from the ground, sending him towards a tree. Baruka spun in the air as he landed on his feet. Izuku was about to attack the elf when he heard a yell from behind him. Izuku Midori yelled the air anchor as he was mid-air swinging his hand to kill him with his sword. Looks like I am not the only one after his head, Baruka thought. However, as he was mid-air, a kunai came from nowhere and pierced the air anchor from near the heart. Had you just awakened? Asked Izuku as he looked at Masamune, who was on the verge of breaking down. Ichigo take care of him, he just killed someone Suzuki san check whether he has a pulse yelled Izuku as he turned back to Baruka and dashed to engage him. They both engaged in a fierce fist fight, their dagger and sword locked with each other, and they both used one hand only to somehow find an opening. All the fighting ethics had been thrown out long ago. I've seen that humans have certain rules and borders while fighting, but you don't have. Why is that so? Asked Baruka intrigued. Others fight to goad or to satisfy their own ego, proving their strength. However, from the beginning of my life, I've fought to protect those close to me and above all to survive. If I followed the rules, I'd be long dead, said Izuku as he jumped back a little. Amazing ILL have fun chopping you down yelled Baruka maniacally. Funny, since it is your army that has been chopped down, said Izuku tauntingly as he smirked victoriously. Yuri Suzuki was checking up on the air anchor while Ichigo was calming down Masamune. It s not your fault Izuku would have died had it not been for you, said Ichigo, while trying to comfort him. The s dead said Suzuki solemnly. I killed him, muttered Masamune with tears welling his eyes. Listen, you did nothing wrong. You saved Izuku. Yuri trying to become a hunter and a hero, and ILL tell you something Izuku's mentor he and Kaminari know about All Might says to us all the time. In hero business, you can t save everybody, but you have to save everyone you can. And sometimes, you have to get your hands dirty to keep the world clean. Don't t cry, said Ichigo. B, but what would my friend say? I am a murderer, what would Izumi say? Asked Ichigo in between sobs. Listen, Yuri not a murderer, Yuri a savior, you saved Izuku. And as for Izumi, well, I and Izuku also had to kill a few hunters who were going to kill us to get more money. It is just what life is, you have to face the harsh reality. But as I said, Izuku also killed, and Izumi knows, so she would understand. She'd rather be thankful to you for protecting her brother, said Ichigo as Masamune calmed down a little. ILL bucking kill you came a yell. They turned to see a pissed off Baruka yelling at Izuku, while Izuku was sporting a victorious grin. Not going to lie, he s hot, said one of the C-rank girls. And he has a girlfriend, not to mention a girlfriend, said Ichigo with a raised eyebrow. The s pissed off enough, now I need to find an opening, thought Izuku as he came up with a plan. He took out Arasaka s tooth and threw it at Baruka. Huh? This is too easy wait never mind, said Baruka as he dodged the projectile only for Izuku to use Dominator s touch to make it follow Baruka. As Baruka turned toward Izuku, Izuku used his ace in the hole. Skill. Black whip, type. Spell, rank. A rank, this skill allows the user to make whips out of pure mana. This takes 100 mana to create each whip of any length, but uses no extra mana to maintain itself. When cut, it takes 10 mana for regeneration of 1 meter, and when disperse 100 man returns to the user. Izuku activated black whip using his left hand as it gripped Baruka. With his right hand, he drove the sword straight through Baruka's heart, killing him instantly. The red gate had been cleared. The B ranker and others were still in awe of what had happened. This battle was of epic proportions, and what was more was that Izuku had alone killed an elf in an instant and further killed their leader. But for Ichigo, his mind was focusing on something else. Hey Izuku, this quirk is perfect for bondage. WTF Ichigo. Chapter 42. The gate had been cleared. 
When the red gate opened, Hawks looked towards it expecting a bunch of high rankers with a few C rankers. However, only the low ranking ones came out led by Izuku and Ichigo. Hawks was in awe as his thoughts went back to what Lady Nagant had said. He really is special. Wait, not the time. Right now he needs to jeep back to his sister, thought Hawks. Midoriya, said Hawks as Izuku stopped. Ah Hawks, said Izuku excitedly. Not the time. I would really like to talk to you, but your sister was most probably attacked, said Hawks bluntly as Izuku's eyes widened. Auntie worry, your friend was informed and backup departed a few hours ago, said Hawks. Back at that isnt enough yelled Izuku panicking. It is if it is a national rank hunter, said Hawks as Izuku froze. What? Asked Izuku, doubting whether he heard right. The only national rank hunter hero in Japan was All Might. National rank hunters heroes were extremely rare, so rare that there were only seven in the world. All Might from Japan, Andre, Stars and Stripes, both from the USA, Liu Zhihang from China, Reikel from Britain, Doctor Strange from Nepal, and finally Nightwatch from India. These hunters were a class apart from even S ranks, so it was quite confusing for Izuku when Hawk said that one of them had gone to save his sister. What do you mean? Asked Izuku. Just go, said Hawks, and Izuku nodded. I'll drop him home and do something about those lone bastards, said Ichigo and Izuku once again nodded. Izuku had reached home to a very peculiar scene. Shoto had his fireside lit up and a purple hair girl was roasting marshmallows on it while Ichako was eating them with Izumi's head on her lap. Kaminari had a bunch of cables in his mouth, all of which were connected to a wire. What the hell is happening here? Asked Izuku as the next moment a young-looking guy entered the room with ectoplasm. Ah, you must be Midoriya Izuku. I am Steve Ray, better known as Nightwatch, said Steve as he put his hand forward. Izuku however was just in awe. Nightwatch was known for keeping his identity secret. However, the person in front of him was claiming to be Nightwatch, and Izuku, even without sensing his power, could tell that he was telling the truth. H hi I, I am Izuku Midoriya, said Izuku as he shook his hand. Nice to meet ya. Dinky told me a lot about you. I gotta say, he was right. But where is the third guy? Ichigo Yaoirozu? Asked Steve. Well, he is dealing with some business of a friend. Loan sharks and stuff, said Izuku. Right okay. I'll get going. But before that, gotta take care of this house, said Steve as he rushed out of the room. Izumi are you alright? Asked Izuku as he rushed to her who got up from Ichako's lap and hugged him. I am fine. Ichako Nichan, Denki, Shodo, and Jiru-san saved me, said Izumi snuggling in his neck. We didn't he do shit. Ichako dealt with the thugs, said Kaminari. Right. Thank you all. Ichako said Izuku as he turned to his girlfriend. Yadeku kun Asked Ichako as she looked at him. Izuku hugged her as tight as he could, a skill that he learned from his mother, and kissed her on the forehead. Thanks, said Izuku in her ears as everyone looked with different expressions. Izumi was fangirling, Jiru had a mildly amused expression, Kaminari had a lenny face, and as for Shoto, marshmallows. Well this is going to take a lot of time to repair, said Izuku as he assessed the damage. The furniture could be replaced, but there were holes in the wall and the floor. I am sorry, I could have minimized the damage, said Ichako with a frown as everyone looked at her as if she was an alien. You took down four thugs and almost killed the fifth and you re-frowning over the damage. Asked Izuku. Be but it is going to cause. Stop right there, if it weren't tea for you, Izumi would be I don't tea even want to think what would have happened. So don't tea you dare frown or be sad over anything, said Izuku sternly. As for the damage said Steve as he entered the room and put his hand on the ground. As I said I'll take care of the house, he said as a pulse of energy spread through the room and then the building. The next moment, the holes were filling themselves up. Earth manipulation extended to concrete and other stuff. Cool right? Asked Steve with a grin as he single-handedly did half the job of the repair team. The furniture will be replaced. They are under insurance right? Asked Steve. Right, yeah, they are, said Izuku as he closed his open mouth. All right. Hey hot and cold, try making sharp weapons out of your eyes. Sub-zero temperature makes a wound more severe and painful. Keep that in mind, he said as he walked out. What just happened? Ah, that s just him. Doing kick his stuff and then dropping combat tips. He s eccentric, said Kaminari. I am not came a voice from outside. Shodo meanwhile was staring at his right hand. My broadsword would be nice. The Kugo Katsuki had just had one hell of an experience. Right now, he was in his bed, thinking about what had happened earlier. Flashback, he was returning from a fun dungeon clearing session, by which it meant blasting everything in his way, when he saw a girl cornered by three people. Let us have some fun and then we ll leave ya. So cooperate, said one of the thugs. That stop she pleaded. What are you assholes doing? Yelled Bakugo as he blasted the first one. Ah the thug yelled as the second one tried to punch him only for Bakugo to duck and hit him in the back with an explosion. However, the third one had used the four iron bars in his hand to capture Bakugo. 
Like that Motherbaker. I can manipulate metal structures, you ain't getting out of that, the thug said with a grin. Leave her alo Bakugo was cut off as the thug got knocked off by something. While the second thug started before he too fell on the ground with a thud. The third thug was hit on the burn caused by Bakugo so hard that it started to bleed. The next moment the girl and the wall both disappeared, revealing the fact that the alley was much longer than it seemed, and a blonde girl materialized. You know, it was totes adorbs that you jumped in to save me, but I had it under control fam, she said as she pulled his cheeks. What the hell are you doing and I too had it under control yelled Bakugo flustered. Aw, you're so cute, like a Pomeranian, she said with a giggle. Shut up, G, calm down Han. Though thanks for jumping in. It is the thought that counts IG, she said. What are you saying? Asked Bakugo with an I'm tears. It is not like he didn't t understand, it was just irritating, and he couldn't t even get angry because she was cute. So, you got a name? Bakugo Katsuki. And stop talking like that, I want t, she giggled. DCH. You re lucky you re cute, said Bakugo with a blush. Oh, thanks Bakubab. I am Kamiyatsu Shimi, a Shiketsu first year doing her internships, she said with a giggle. Auntie call me that, why were you angry Bakubab, did your male ego get hurt when a totes babe like me saved you bootiful ass? She asked getting close to his face. Well no, I just auntie like to be saved I wanna be a hero who saves, not someone who needs saving and yeah, you re a total babe. But that s out of context. Forget I said that, he said. Oh, well. Since it s the thought that counts, how about I properly thank you? After IV dealt with them, that is, said Kami with a sly grin. Heh, are you asking me on a date? Asked Bakugo with a grin. But cha think Bakuba. Eight time and place, Bakugo said with a grin. And Bakugo was smiling widely when he felt his phone vibrate. Yeah Deku, what you want? Another day offer the place for the nearest chemist, or both. Why chemist? Where else would you find a condom? Yeah, you could find that there too. Stop yelling you damn nerd what? I will beat your ass intl the next week what do you mean next monto ya? Right right, we re getting off topic. I leave, alright I'll tell him. What happened though? After a long talk, Bakugo sat on his bed wide eyed. I am the one with anger issues, explosive quirk, and scary face. Then why is it that he is the center of all the trouble? Chapter 43 Izuku had returned just as Ichigo entered the house. Hey everyone, good to see you all are okay, said Ichigo as he entered the house panting. Why does it look like you've just run a couple of hundred kilometers? Asked Izuku. Because I just did. I've run all the way from the other side of the city, said Ichigo. Oh. Figures, both Izuku and Kaminari said nonchalantly as others looked at them with wide eyes for dismissing it as nothing. Wow, we said the same thing, said Kaminari and Izuku, again at the same time. Wow, this happened to me and Izuku in the dungeon too, said Ichigo. Anyways, so I am staying back with Izumi, I just had a conversation with Kakin about it. Does anyone else want to stay? Asked Izuku as he remembered the conversation he had a few minutes ago. A few moments earlier, Izuku had just dialed Bakugo's number and was greeted in a weird accent. Hey Kakin, I wanted to ask you to inform the teacher that I want another day off. Wait why chemist? Oh, a condom, you could find it at the 24-7 store or the grocery store across the street, they keep it at the counter. Wait why would I need a condom I am not doing that next week. I'll beat your ass into the next month what do I mean? I mean eat shit Katsuki Bakugo we re getting off topic, present, yeah, so that happened. After this, yeah, said Shoto as everyone nodded, right. But I'll have to go for my internship, so I'll leave by 11 I guess, said Izuku. Fine, so what is next? Right now, Izuku was in front of a door. When he had come to the agency, All Might had greeted him and told him that someone was waiting for him inside the guest office. As Izuku entered he saw a chair turned the other way. Uh hello, I was told by All Might to come here, he said as he moved to the chair in front of the desk. Ah, hello, I am a mouse, a bear, and above all the principal of UA, Nezu, the per animal. Rat god, yeah, the rat god said as he turned. Yes more of a rat Satan. He taught me world domination at the age of 18. Uh good morning. Said Izuku, completely confused. Good afternoon Midoriya, please take a seat, said Nezu with a bright grin. Izuku mentally fascinated at his mistake as he sat in front of Nezu. So, I have been told about your abilities, said Nezu as he put his hand on the table. Right I believe I was called here for that. Asked Izuku, confused. Not quite. You see, you have to be reevaluated before UA entrance exams, that is compulsory. And as All Might told me, your power has no limit and is constantly growing. Coupling it with one for all, it will no doubt be S rank if not higher, said Nezu as he looked at Izuku. Right said Izuku. Now, I am supposed to refine your skills, you know with analysis and IQ and stuff. But before that, we have to discuss what happens when you re-diagnosed as S-rank, said Nezu as he pulled out two boards. 
so I'll guide you while we have a fun game of chess and shogi. That would give me a fair idea of your skills, said Nezu, grinning innocently as if it was an everyday task for him. Inside one for all. That rat is evil, said Banjo. He hated chess and shogi. But then, he hated using his brain altogether. Yes brilliant, said the first one gleefully. Yeah, plus Izuku likes both chess and shogi, so he'd be happy, said Nana. Both are going to be really difficult, said Jin Wu as he rubbed his chin. Izuku had proved to be way better than what he expected. What would happen right now? In the real world, both. Asked Izuku with a raised brow. Both. Unless Yuri not smart enough to do it, said Nezu tauntingly as he kept the innocent grin. Yuri on, said Izuku as he too grinned. And so, both of them were locked in a game, or more like in games of shogi and chess, side by side. So Midoriya, as soon as Yuri diagnosed as S rank, ULL get a lot of offers from multiple guilds, said Nezu. Right. I expected that. I personally want to join All Might S guild, said Izuku. Right I suggest against that, said Nezu seriously. Why so? Asked Izuku. In the past 10 years, no one, and I mean no one has been accepted by All Might S guild. Many have been granted access to this tower, but the guild is separate. It would raise too many eyebrows if you all of a sudden get accepted by this guild. The veteran heroes who are in that guild, the villains who might know this secret, and many others will be drawn to you, said Nezu as Izuku frowned. So trailed off Izuku as he saw his king getting cornered right in the starting. Let us first talk about everything. So as I was saying, ULL also get offers from foreign countries, like the top guild from the US, and a few others. I humbly ask you to deny those requests, unless it is to be flagged under Hellfire Corps, said Nezu. Right, I would never have accepted it anyway, said Izuku, but then he thought about the last part. Why Hellfire Corps? Because instead of a single guild, it is rather an alliance of multiple guilds. Hawkes Guild is also under that. It makes coordinating with smaller guilds or guilds of foreign countries easier. Plus, their owner of Hellfire Incorporated is Steve Ray, and I am pretty sure you've met him, said Nezu, as he realized what was happening. That s how he got hold of Kaminari, he muttered as he saw an opening. Yes. But that s for guilds. Anyways, also, as soon as you become s rank, you ll be a target for many. So I d suggest you get tested only when you re very strong, said Nezu. Right, said Izuku as he played his moves. By now, half of both boards were empty. The games were bloodbath as no players showed any mercy. That s for me as a principal. But now, since I am also going to be your mentor, because you v impressed me well enough in the games, I'll give you a tip, said Nezu. Right said Izuku as he smiled feeling a sense of accomplishment. When the association asks you for this, Don T accept immediately, said Nezu with a smirk, and Izuku smirked too, seeing where this was going. Why sir? He asked. Because an S rank player is like a queen of the board, most valued and the strongest, said Nezu as he protected took out Izuku as queen. And so, anyone does everything it can to keep it on the board, said Nezu with a smug grin, as Izuku's eyes widened. Right, the association will offer you many things, conditions, and leverages. So what do you have in mind? Asked Nezu. And first of all, when I studied Japanese law, I remember an old clause that was from the time when heroes had just become legal and government employed. There was this new rule that allowed heroes under 18 to get licenses for any vehicle under special circumstances. I am sure that being diagnosed as an S rank will come under it, said Izuku with a smirk as he went on offensive mode. I see you are very smart Midoriya. Finding loopholes at the age of 15. And I didn't t take you as someone with an interest in cars. No offense, you look like a nerd, said Nezu. Well when dad was around he would drive me and my sister in a car. He had an obsession with them, and I guess I inherited it. And no offense taken, however, I am told that I am not a nerd, rather, a really hot nerd, said Izuku as he forced Nezu to go on the defensive. When All Might told me that you were smart, I guessed that it was by his standards, and you know he may be the greatest hero, but he ain't the smartest, said Nezu as Izuku comically glared at him. Hey, that s my idol you re talking about, he said with a pout. Haha, fair. Next favor. You said I shouldn't t join a big guild. Well then, I will just ask permission to make my own, said Izuku as he made it Nezu and Shogi. Nezu by now was going full creepy mode as he pulled out his tea from nowhere. Good, said Nezu as he focused on chess as he finally got serious. And for my last favor, my V got a friend I want to get out of prison, said Izuku as he rubbed his chin, feeling the pressure. Oh? Who is that? Asked Nezu. Lady Nagant, said Izuku as he did his move. And that won't be possible, even if you get diagnosed as S rank, said Nezu as he took a sip of his tea, and Izuku frowned. But, it can happen, and it will happen if the principal of UA himself would come out to support you. Checkmate, said Nezu as he pulled off a 1000 IQ move, blowing Izuku's mind away. Alright. I feel that even though you weren't completely serious and still defeated me, I've done something pretty amazing, said Izuku. 
Oh, that s a partial truth. I wasn't t completely serious the whole time, and yes, you did something amazing. That would be in fact an understatement. No one has managed to get me serious and even last 8 minutes. And congratulations, you have lasted 25 minutes. Good game, said Nezu as he offered his hand to shake. Good game, said Izuku with a smile. I expect you every Friday after school for 4 hours until 8. You will have lunch with me while we will work on your skills. And I'd prefer if you kept your Sundays free and spent that time with your sister, because your life will soon be overloaded with work, said Nezu as he started to walk out. Yes, Sensei, said Izuku, beaming as Nezu chuckled. I am more excited than I have ever been, thought Nezu as he walked out. As for Izuku, his thoughts finally wrapped around everything. Wait, he knew about one for all, and where did he get the tea from? Chapter 44 Izuku had returned to his apartment after the talk with Nezu. The first thing he saw on entering was Izumi once again with her head on Ichako's lap was watching TV with her. Wow, you both seem closer to each other than you both are to me, said Izuku jokingly. Nope, it is just we both have a lot in common, said Ichako, giggling. Like. Asked Izuku raising an eyebrow. We both love you, said Izumi innocently as both Ichako and Izuku blushed heavily. Yeah, muttered Ichako shyly as Izuku had a heart squeeze. I mean anyone would get that if someone as cute as Acha told them that she loved them. Alright alright, let us not simp over her and carry on with the chapter. I am on a tight schedule, I love you both too. A lot, said Izuku as he hugged them and then went to change. Wow, he seems more like my dad than a brother, said Izumi as she smiled in awe. I know right. He makes me feel like there is nothing more important than me, Achako said as she too smiled at Izuku. Well, I mean Yuri his girlfriend and soon to be wife, said Izumi, adding the last part teasingly. Watch Akko yelled, flustered as she started to float, with a giggling Izumi trying to hold her down. Yuri so fun to tease, she said laughing. Yuri mean yelled at Akko as she deactivated her quirk. So you want to break my brother's heart by not marrying him? Asked Izumi in a fake accusing tone. No I mean I I want to but it's embarrassing she yelled causing Izumi to laugh again. The Chigo was walking towards his house when he saw Bakugo walking with a girl. Hey Bakugo, he called as Bakugo looked at him and grinned. Bazabaka greeted Bakugo. Ha, hey, ran to you a little too cheerful. Asked Ichigo as he then turned to the girl. Hi, my name is Ichigo Yayoirozu, he introduced himself as the girl blushed a little. Hi, my name is Akumo Fukukado, she replied brightly. Fukukado are you Ms. Joke's relative in any way? Asked Ichigo. Why yeah, I am her niece, she said, taken aback. Oh. Well, the name Fukukado is just so rare that I thought you both were related, said Ichigo with a smile. So how are Izumi and Deku? Asked Bakugo. Oh, very fine. Achako almost killed the attackers though, said Ichigo with a chuckle. Wait attackers? What happened? Asked Sakumo. Well Izumi was attacked by you know, the s rank guy whose brother was with us dot anyway, so Achako, one of our friends dealt with them while Kaminari, another friend of mine, took care of a few that were left, said Ichigo as Sakumo giggled. I know both Kaminari and Achako-chan, she said. Oh. I feel pretty stupid now, said Ichigo with a blank face. But they need to keep me in the loop, said Sakumo now angry. I mean what if something happened to them both? I am an A-rank healer like Izumi, and I can fight decently, they should have asked me for help, she said. Oh, so you are the girl Izuku talked about. That s nice to know. He really holds you in high regard. As for not telling you, well, he knew you were with Bakugo in the dungeon, said Ichigo. Oh but still how come Bakugo knows? She asked. Well, he told him to ask for leave from the teacher, said Ichigo with a chuckle. Hein said Sakumo in defeat as Ichigo smiled. Anyways, I'll be on my way. Bakugo, Izuku Walden T come with us for Saturday's dungeon, so care to fill in? Asked Ichigo. And make a shitload of money? Hell yeah, said Bakugo with a wide grin. Whatever, just try not to die by Ichako's hand. Oh and Denki's girlfriend will also be with us, said Ichigo. That dunce face got a girlfriend. The rest of the week had passed without a hitch, and right now Izuku was once again in front of the building where the s rank dungeon Ki's dungeon was. Coming to think of it, this is the Hellfire Corporation Agency, Nightwatch s well, whatever. Let us get inside, he thought as he once again entered the dungeon. He remembered the morning conversation with his sister. Flashback, hey sis, I am going somewhere. I might be gone for a while, said Izuku looking at her with a bag. Huh? Why? What about school? Asked Izumi. The internship work, said Izuku with a sweat drop. The David sir has got that covered, said Izuku. David, sir. I mean that s what you call your seniors at work, said Izuku rolling his eyes. Right, bye brother, I'll tell Ichako, said Izumi. Right. Also, I love you, said Izuku. Yeah, I'll tell her that too, she said jokingly. This was for you. But do tell her that. And, last time I came here, I was scared. 
But now I am not afraid, thought Izuku as he walked towards the gate he had last time turned away from. As he used a key to open the main gate, he saw a dark corridor with the end not visible. Huh? Where are the monsters? He thought as he looked around. He was wondering this when a quest popped up in the system. Quest. Normal quest. Collect demon souls part I. The castle is filled with demons. Hunt them down and collect their souls to get special rewards. Quest requirement collect 10,000 souls. Rewards. 1-1 one, one item of your choice. 2 bonus stats plus 20. 3 hidden reward. The rewards are pretty nice. 20 stat points. A choice from the shop. There is some pretty costly stuff there. Also, I haven't been disappointed by the hidden rewards up until now. Great, said Izuku with a grin as he started walking inside. As he walked inside, his eyes widened as he saw the dungeon. What did the system recreate the whole of the Shizuoka? He thought. Around him was what looked like the whole of Shizuoka on fire. Is this a field-type dungeon? He muttered as he turned to see multiple monsters running towards him. You can obtain one soul per demon, though there are demons with multiple souls on higher floors. Who floors? This is interesting. Heh, let us start, thought Izuku as he took out his sword and dashed towards the demons. He killed three demons in a single swipe, cutting their head clean off. You defeated three demons. You gained 100 XP x3. You gained three souls. You need 34,060 XP to reach the next level. Oh, so now I can also know my experience points. Well, this is getting even more fun, muttered Izuku with a grin as he dashed towards the upcoming horde of demons. Chapter 45. Izuku was standing on top of multiple monsters looking around trying to find some more monsters to kill. DCH these are dear ranks at best. I need to find even stronger monsters to level up. Usually, it takes 9 C ranks to level up and that S when I go alone. But now the experience needed to level up is increasing exponentially muttered Izuku as a monster tried to attack. Meh, Izuku deadpanned as he stabbed its head with his sword. Wow he muttered sarcastically as 100 XP added to his meter. Demon souls collected. 329. Izuku looked at the item in his hand as stood in the middle of destruction. Item. Entry permit. Class. Type. This entry permit allows player to move to the second floor of the demon castle. Can be used at the first floor magic circle. More right, I am not that patient. Any monster type, please come out, said Izuku as the leader of the bears came out. Wow I remember you were pretty big, but I guess I never fully took in how big you are, Izuku said with raised eyebrows. That sounds pretty dirty. Wow, real mature review author. Not my fault it s just that the stuff I've been listening to is explicit. Anyways, I was talking about the size of the bear. Nothing even close to what this asshole author is talking about. Alright, let me get up on you, said Izuku as the bear kneeled and bowed on hearing this. Thanks, man, you're re awesome. Wait, not man, bear. Or is man fine? Are you male or female? Asked Izuku, once again overthinking stuff. Hey, I almost stopped doing this after classes with Mr. Shield, this is one of the exceptions. Anyways, so Izuku ordered the bear to go to the center where there was a large beam going towards the sky, kinda like Bifrost. What Izuku didn't he expect was for it to shoot off at the speed of an F1 car. Whoa that s so fast man, you re awesome kinda like a tank said Izuku as the bear swooned at the praise. However, this was short lived as multiple demons surrounded them. Psy these are annoying. Kinda like ants, but bigger. Just in size, their strength feels like that of ants. In fact, even weaker, muttered Izuku grumpily as Tank glared at the monsters that were irritating his master. The bear snorted angrily as he took off, stampeding like a bull trampling on every monster in the way. Whoa damn you know what, I am going to name you Tank. So Tank, do this until we reach the magic circle. The place from where that weird thing is coming out from, said Izuku as he held onto its fur with one hand while holding his sword in the other. As Tank moved forward, Izuku stabbed the monsters that somehow survived the onslaught of the giant of a bear that was completely ripping them apart. Inside a big warehouse, a person had just woken up. Where am I? The last thing I remember is leaving for the US why is everything so blurry? Thought the person as he tried to focus and stand up, only to find himself cuffed. What? He muttered as he looked around only to find only white things surrounding him. Why does it feel like I am in a hospital room or in a lab? The person tried to break the cuffs trying to stand up only to fall on the ground and seeing his face on the almost mirror-like floor. He just looks like him, no other connection. So Deku's dad is not banned, but I couldn't find anyone who fits the bill better. And his hair is white instead of light blue. Wait how much time has passed. Ah, I see our medications are now unable to keep you asleep. Hello Hisashi Midoriya, I am Dr. Garaki, said a doctor as he walked towards Hisashi. Who are you and what do you want? Asked Hisashi angrily. I just introduced myself. As for what I want your quirk is pretty interesting, said Garaki as he smirked. My quirk. Oh so you discovered it, said Hisashi with a grim look. Yes Salamander. I know you secretly worked as the Terminator hero. Salamander. Your quirk, Salamander is a really interesting one. 
Sadly, your child Izuku Midoriya didn't he have any, the doctor said with a smirk. Don't he include my child in this yelled Hisashi angrily. Why not? I mean, he doesn't he have anyone to protect him or his sister, sneered Garaki. Inko was also a part of the program she won't he let anyone hurt them, yelled Hisashi angrily. Who? The only Inko Midoriya I know is in the Musatafu hospital due to eternal sleep. Garaki was now practically laughing as Hisashi's eyes widened. I'll kill you, Hisashi muttered as his hair shadowed his eyes. Kill me? Yuri handcuffed with quirk and awakening suppressors. And even if we ignored that, you've been asleep for over 10 years. What can you do? Asked Garaki mockingly. Sometimes it's better to stay silent, said Hisashi as he stood up. The next moment, he just broke the cuffs as if it was nothing, and Garaki's eyes went wide. Nomu he yelled as the door opened and a weird purple looking thing entered. Had these toys? He asked as he started to walk towards Garaki. The Nomu dashed forward as he tried to slash Hisashi with his sword like arms who moved around in his place. For a moment he stopped in his place as if defeated, and Garaki smiled at his victory. That is, until his beard and long hair fell on the ground, leaving him clean. Thanks for the shave, he said as he poked through the Nomu's brain with his middle finger, dragging it to the point that he was looking straight at Garaki, with his middle finger pointed at him horizontally. Did anyone tell you, I am a bucking gangster? Send more yelled Garaki, now feeling threatened. Oh buck off bitch it's been 10 years since I've seen my kids or my wife. I want to directly meet them, but for now, I need to watch over them. The last thing I want is to waste time fighting your stupid hickless shitheads. Like their top literally looks like pink shit. Now, that being said, the sashi shot towards Garaki as he appeared next to him with his hand on his face. Let me give you a parting gift, he said as he slammed him into the ground as he looked at the doctor boredly. I finish what I start. Don't he worry, I'll hunt you down. You know us exterminators, we like to play with our prey. I would have shown mercy had you not involved my family. Tell whoever you are working for that I'll also come for him, said Hisashi as he walked away. H how do you know I am working for someone? Asked the doctor as he coughed. Because weak hicks like you only work in someone's shadows. Bitches like you are nothing on their own unlike people like David Shield or Nezu. These guys could have the world groveling at their feet just by using their brains. And don't bother targeting them. Either I or All Might would bust you Mithurbican ass. You talk a lot muttered Garaki. I've got strength you can t-rival. I can do whatever the buck I want, bitch. The Sashi Midoriya, quirk. Salamander his quirk allows him to breath fire, manipulate it using his hand and legs, a very hard skin, much like the scales of reptiles. Fun fact, Hisashi wanted to name this quirk dragon but decided against it due to unknown reasons. Chapter 46. Each floor of the demon castle is made up of a separate world. Yes, this chapter is going to have a lot of my, the future Deku S. Pav, since I am going to talk in first person explaining my experience in this dungeon. Deal with it. So a monster holding the permit to the next floor randomly appeared on each floor. It wasn't he always the strongest one, or the biggest one. In fact, sometimes it was one of the most common ones, so I had to destroy almost every monster on each floor. So if the tower had 100 floors, you could say that there are 100 different floors. Why are you saying if? I mean, you've experienced the shit, so you should talk in statements, not as if you're remaking assumptions. Bitch that develops suspense and makes the story interesting you should know, Yuri the bucking author. Okay, no need to yell TT. So as I was saying before the stupid author interrupted me, mean TT. So as I was saying before I nearly attempted to strangle the author to death, I started to climb the floors at a scary pace. In fact, before I knew I was on the 27th floor. The intermediate demons are high C ranks at best, muttered Izuku thoughtfully. The difficulty of demons should increase exponentially with the floor. The difference between S rank and A rank itself is distinct. The problem now wasn't the difficulty. It was time. When I first entered the dungeon, I expected it to be an S rank, however, the boring battles proved otherwise. However, I was not sure whether I would be able to reach the top in a week. I had told Izumi that I would take a week, and if I took more time, she would get worried, and so will Ichako. So that meant I couldn't afford to rest or take it easy. And so I reached the 50th floor in no time. Collected Demon Souls. 2389. Izuku was currently standing in front of a giant monster. Ruler of the lower floors, avaricious falcon. However, that wasn't the problem. I mean, it was, but he wasn't even moving, just staring at Izuku. The current problem was all the guards surrounding him. All right, mages, bears, tank, igris, and iron, all of you come out, said Izuku as his shadows came out. Deal with them, he said as he activated stealth going invisible. I then proceeded to observe everything. My soldiers were doing pretty well, however, I was getting an eerie feeling. Why isn't he moving? I mean his movements won TB that Fazizuku was cut off as the demon disappeared, and the next moment, half of his army was destroyed. 
Buck, he looked at the demon as it continued to fight Igris and Iron as Tank took care of the guards. However, even with Igris and Iron fighting together, it looked more like a massacre. Izuku suddenly felt a chill run up his spine as the demon looked in the direction of him. Buck, the demon quickly rushed towards Izuku as he swung his half-axe-like weapon at him. Iron yelled Izuku as Iron defended him at the last moment, only to be blown away. It would have killed Izuku had he not used his sword at the right moment. Izuku then jumped up as the demon smiled. Why is he smi- oh I can t-dodge mid-air, thought Izuku grimly. Or can I? Izuku smirked as he used one for all to create a wind gust by flicking his arms and legs, circling around the attack using the recoil, and punching the demon sending him flying. Wait how strong have I gotten? Asked a shocked Izuku. Recoil. Player went 30% overboard with one for all. 300 damage received, figured. I need to work on making sure I don't go overboard with one for all. Each and every HP counts, especially when I need time to think, thought Izuku as the demon screamed and raged. Wait, that s the same ability as Cerberus. That reminds me, I wish he was there, I would have loved to have him like a shadow soldier, said Izuku as he looked around. Izuku was broken out of his musing as he sensed the demon's attack and barely dodged it. I need to target the head, but it's going to be extremely difficult. I need to that s it thought Izuku as he took off towards a half-broken building leaning towards them at a weird angle. Izuku was purposefully slow as the demon got triggered and started to run after him. As soon as I got near the tower, I activated both one for all and sprint to run up the building as fast as I could while using Dominator S touch on the building. Instead of pulling it to me, however, I used it to stick to it. It is too slow to stop now, thought Izuku triumphantly as he was now almost over the monster. Even if he figured it out, he can t-dodge, he thought as he jumped towards it. The sashi was inside the Secret Hero Association office. It is great news that you survived, said his old commanding officer with a smile. Cut the crap. Tell me what happened to the program? Asked Hisashi in a bored tone. Right well, it isn't tea under the government anymore, he said with a sigh. What? The government was already being an asshole with that abandon all ties on being caught policy, but now you sell us off to someone else, yelled Hisashi angrily. No it is not what you think the government made an agreement with a private agency. I don't tea know anything. However, Hawks should. He was the part of it for a long time, said the officer, scared. Terminator heroes scared the shit out of anyone who knew about their existence, so he was naturally feeling under threat. And that is how Hisashi ended up in front of Hawks, sitting across the table, eating on a jury with him. So? Asked Hisashi. Bu Salamander Senpai, you've always been so mean to me, said Hawks with a pout. Shut up and spit Kigo, deadpanned Hisashi. Well a few years after you disappeared Salamander Senpai, Kaina Senpai betrayed the organization. She then was caught and sent to jail. Four years ago, the government and Hellfire Corps made a secret agreement to transfer the leadership to them, said Hawks. What happened to others? He asked. The ones who were manipulated were released while ones who consensually joined stayed, said Hawks. Wait released? Asked Hisashi, shocked. Yeah. The leader of the Corps, let us just keep it between us, it is Steve Ray, the world's number four hero Nightwatch. He has done stuff for everyone, said Hawks. Seems like a decent guy. How old is he? Asked Hisashi. 18, said Hawks nonchalantly as Hisashi spat out his onajiri. What number 4 in world at 18? He reached that by 17 and a half, said Hawks. WTF. Anyways, so now what? Asked Hawks. ILL watch over my kids from a distance. One is quirkless, but I am pretty sure he s on his way to becoming a great hero, said Hisashi with a proud yet sad smile. Wait what was your full name? Asked Hawks, slowly using his slow brain to connect the obvious dots. Hisashi Midoriya, said Hisashi, confused. Wait is your son Izuku Midoriya? He asked. Oh yeah. He said, even more confused. But the stuff going on these days, that s the thing that makes the most sense. Like father like son, I guess. Chapter 47, it was over. The monster was dead. Izuku from above had targeted his soft spot, his neck, and slid it using his sword. Right now, he was standing in front of it, looking at the drop. As expected, the drops are pretty good for such a strong monster, said Izuku as he petted tank on the side. You obtained, item. Demon Monarch S earring, you obtained, item. Orb of Avarice, you obtained, ingredient item. World Tree Fragment, you obtained, item. Vulcan S Horns X2, item. World Tree Fragment, type. Ingredient, class. The leftover piece of wood was removed from corrupted parts of Vulcan S Club, which was created from the World Tree branch. Woods from World Tree is used in the magic of the highest quality and possesses extremely potent magic. This makes this a vital component in the strongest of magic. This seems really valuable. ILL save it up and find a use for this. Maybe nah, let us not have false hopes, muttered Izuku thinking of his mother. Item. Demon Monarch S earring. Type. Accessory. Class. 
S rank, plus 20 strength plus 20 vitality, said effect will activate if it is equipped with, Demon Monarch S ring, Demon Monarch S necklace, said effect 1 locked, said effect 2 locked, said effect. Is it like those enchanted stuff in video games? Wait, of course it is, my whole life is like a video game, muttered Izuku as he looked at the Orb of Avarice. It was an A rank item, and it doubled the magic S damage. My Don T have any use for it, but would it help Kaminari? I mean he controls his electricity using magic type awakening, but his quirk ultimately comes in the category of elemental genesis, which uses body s natural metabolism, rather than mana and stuff, and Ichigo s quirk and weight, his awakening is a status condition, and that would fall under the magic category, the damage per second would increase from 1 to 2% thought Izuku as he went on a muttering spree causing tank to sweat drop. Well anyway, let s just deal with this shit and get out quickly. Igris and Iron, you guys know what to do. And Tank come here I want another ride, yelled Izuku childishly as Tank chuckled and kneeled in front of him, having learned to properly kneel from Igris. Alright, set sails my knights he yelled excitedly waving his sword in the air as he ruffled Tank's fur with his unoccupied hand. Inside one for all, the first user was chuckling madly, while second, third, and fourth just shook their heads. Fifth much like the first was rolling on the ground with laughter. H-E-S-I imitating a pirate while speaking like a knight, said Banjo. You kids, my only weakness, said N while hiding in his very high collar. Wow I wish he was my kid said Nana, as Sung Jin Woo looked at everyone with a deadpan. Seriously? This kid sees Tank as more of a pet than a shadow soldier, swooning over it. I guess he is still partly a child, said Jin Woo said with a sigh. Oh come on, it was funny to see him like that. It was like that memory of his, bobbing his head to the All Might opening theme. He is still a fanboy at heart, said Banjo. Yeah, and you still got roasted by him a few chapters ago, deadpan Jin Wu. A few what? I meant days. You got roasted by him a few days ago, Jin Wu replied. Well, it s not my fault that he s got the cool guy vibes. If anything, it s your fault since you have the same acting tough actually soft personality, retorted Banjo. I am harder than your hick has ever been, said Jin Wu shutting him up. Ah whenever a guy tries to play alpha male, make a joke about his you know what, it shuts him up for good, said Nana as she recalled instances from her life or kick them there, that works too. I just didn't t want to get up from my throne, added Jin Wu. Right your highness, said the first jokingly. WTF. Was the thought in the minds of second, third, and fourth users. Izuku currently was standing in front of an army of undead, unfazed. Meh, Igris, Iron, open up away. Tank, you re my rider no, you play with whatever soldiers you want to. Rip them apart, eat them, I don't t care. Have fun. I'll deal with a bitch ass boss, said Izuku as he petted Iron as usual. Who a good boy, asked Izuku in a cooing voice, only to remember that the vestiges could see him. Ooh, they must be cracking up, thought Izuku with wide eyes as he cleared his voice. They were. I am told that it was a running gag for them for a long time. Anyways, Igris, Tank, Iron, let us get to work, he said in a deep voice, causing his soldiers to sweat drop. Meanwhile, the army of the undead was nearing them at an unprecedented rate. Ah, we ll do this later, time to buck em up, said Izuku charging and killing multiple opponents. Igris, being as prideful he is, charged in right behind him aiming to not fall behind his great king. Soon Izuku reached the leader of the undead. Are you surprised by how strong my kids are? Asked the leader with a shit-eating grin. Bitch, what kids? Asked Izuku in mock confusion pointing around them all. H huh? Stuttered the leader as he only saw corpses of his army. He snapped his neck to where Izuku was only to see him missing. What? Looking for something. Came a voice as he looked onto the tower, where Izuku was standing, holding a sinister glare that would send chills up anyone's spine. W what are you the leader gasped as Izuku once again disappeared. Your death, came a whisper dangerously close to his ears. The next moment he was sliced over a hundred times, killing him instantly. Looks like undead can also feel fear, said Izuku with a smirk. Oh, you killed so many demons Yuri so awesome, Tank Izuku said completely ignoring Igris and Iron who slouched in the disappointment of not getting praise. Great work guys, said Izuku turning to them as they both suddenly stiffened up and then Igris kneeled and Iron followed his lead. Oh, you guys don't t need to do that, said Izuku with a sweat drop. Chapter 48 I guess he isn't t that much of a kid, said Sung Jin Woo with an impressed expression. Yes, that Blair was pretty good, said the sixth with a nod. That kid did good, we know Banjo was the collective shout of everyone. Meanwhile, outside one for all in the real world, Izuku was sitting with Tank, Iron, and Igris. This is a bucking nice haul. You received spring water from the echoing forest. You received 200,000 XP. You received 220 demon souls. You leveled up. You leveled up. Okay, arise. Mana is contaminated. Extraction is not possible. WTF. Izuku stared at it as he saw a necklace. At least I got the set piece item, he said with a dejected sigh. 
Item. Demon Monarch S Necklace. Type. Accessory. Class. S rank. Plus 20 agility plus 20 intelligence. A set effect will activate if it is equipped with Demon Monarch S earring. Demon Monarch S ring. Set effect 1 locked. Set effect 2 locked. The next moment, another screen popped up in front of him. Plus 5 all stats that S like leveling up 5 times yelled Izuku excitedly, completely forgetting the gloom of not being able to turn the boss into his summon. Wait 1 more piece is left, and 25 more levels too. But how is it that my quest is complete? Asked Izuku to himself as he looked at the quest screen hovering in front of him. Demon souls collected. 10,001, 10,000. I guess it is a good thing. I don't think ILL survived the conditions on the floors above in such a state, thought Izuku as he opened his stat window. Name Izuku Midoriya level 55. Dob Necromancer Fatigue 0. Idol the Chosen 1 plus 2 others. HP 76,100. MP 25,910. Strength 103. Vitality 100. Agility 96. Intelligence 96. Sent 65. Remaining points 0. Normal quest. Collect Demon Souls Part I has been completed. You can receive the following rewards. One item of your choosing. 2 plus 20 stats. 3 hidden reward. I'm an item of my choosing from the shop. Well, a sword or anything else would be nice, but it gets revised each time. So accept reward 1. Cursed random box, said Izuku without even looking at the shop. The cursed random box gives me what I need, unlike the blessed random box. Let us see what is this, thought Izuku as the box opened, and in his hand appeared a map. The world map. He muttered as he opened it and looked, only to see an X mark on a place in the UK. Huh? What is that? Asked the first user curiously. Okay so remember I told you that I am a god and that the ultimate being created earth. Asked Sung Jin Wu. Yeah. We remember the conversation, said the fourth user thoughtfully as Nana's face lit up. Wait I know what you re going to say, she said. What? Asked Jin Wu with a smirk. You, I mean rulers and monarchs are NT the only godly being out there, said Nana with a smile. That is 50% of what I was going to say. But nice work, said Jin Wu as he turned to others. Well he did make Earth and the Chaos World, he isn't he the creator of the universe, said Jin Wu. And the Chaos Energy isn't he the only form of energy. Why do you think that monarchs cold and tea destroy Earth before or even take the fight there? He asked. Ah uh, because you stop them? Asked Jin Wu. There used to be a time when Ashborn was a monarch too. However, what stopped both the godly beings from invading Earth was the presence of two more powers on this end. Or more like two forms of the same power, said Jin Wu as he stopped. What is that power that is strong enough to stop a godly being like you and other rulers and monarchs? Asked the fifth user. Chaos energy is the energy of chaos world. Similarly, there is another form of energy here in this world, in this universe. It is called Kai, 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 Aura, Prana, and many other things in different languages, the shadow monarch replied. Wait the legends and myths of old times are actually true? Asked a third user. Yes. And the more refined form is what you call magic. Runes on ancient buildings, symbols of the Incas and Mayans, and many other ancient civilizations like the Indus Valley, are actually based on this kind of magic. On the other hand, monarchs have on multiple occasions given humans access to unrefined raw chaos magic only the rulers and monarchs can handle. That is the root of the concept of selling soul to the devil. Another example is the bastardized version of Illuminati, said Jin Wu. Wait so all the Satanism and other cults stem from this? Yes. As I was saying, this magic is the reason your earth was protected. The magicians used the Kai to make runes and interact with enemies on a metaphysical level, like the mage-type hunters and heroes. They also protected the earth by creating a three-point barrier, i.e., a barrier with three supporting points, protecting the earth from extra-dimensional threats. While the Kai users protected the world from the threats of this very universe. Like destroying the Illuminati, stopping the advent of monsters who would somehow breach the barrier when one of the sanctums would fall, etc. So how did the monarchs breach the barrier? Asked the first, really interested. For him, all this was similar to the comics he used to read. Well as I told you that the timeline was set back to one certain day multiple times until I defeated the monarchs. Well, 50 years before that fateful day the first dungeon appeared, the master of the London Sanctorum fell. But this was not due to natural death, rather, it was caused by a cult following the leader of the beast monarch, who had given him enough power to do so. This allowed the beast monarch to smuggle in some of his best stealth and assassin experts. Now they cold and tea take on the whole world since their number was really low and the tension between USA and USSR was still high. Any such incident would result in a nuclear war and they would be destroyed, said Jin Wu, stopping for others to take all that information in. Right. That is true. The day was in 2010 and by 50 years before you must mean during the 1960s. The Cold War was going on during that time, said Nana in a thinking pose. Right. Oh, I forgot, these supporting points are called sanctums which I mentioned. 
So these assassins decided to hunt down the magicians and Kai users only, said Jin Wu. But how did no one notice this? Asked the first thoughtfully. Well, at that time such powers were considered very bad. So, people who could use Kai or magic remained in secrecy and had a private life with people going to Kathmandu to learn magic in different communities developing secret schools to learn the usage of Kai. Like in China, India, Britain, Scotland, etc. Right. But how does the map come in play? Asked Banjo. Before that, you remember Steve. Kaminari S. Sensei and World S. Number 4. Asked Jin Wu. Yeah, they all said unanimously. Along with him being the now brightest fragment, he doesn't only use chaos magic, but also Kai. And the number one in India is actually a magician. Like a magician who uses Kai, said Jin Wu. What? Both Indians are the last users of these arts. Nope. Like Steve is, but I have seen similarities in the no.1 Indian hero and a few heroes in Scotland's powers. Same in some heroes of Korea, the USA, and Russia. But the highest concentration is in Nepal, where the original school of mystic arts, as the users of this call it, was situated. I am guessing some survivors were left who had to flee Nepal when All for One's influence reached there. Since All for One could only control the eastern part of India the rest was safe. After he was pushed back a few hundred years ago, the magician shifted back to Nepal and India border. Write the map? Asked Banjo impatiently, not in the mood of a long history lesson. Well, the weapons wielded by us aren't the only weapons. Many holy weapons are actually weapons that were crafted using materials enhanced by Kai and then enchanted by the runes and mystic arts. One such weapon was very famous across the world and associated with an ancient kingdom in Britain. After my wife died, I spent my life searching for these weapons until that architect lured me into the trap. Before that, however, I found the ruins of that kingdom and the legendary weapon. So it's a map to that. Asked the third. I mean, he was interested in swords. Chapter 49. Whatever, let us see what the second reward is, said Izuku as he tapped accept reward. Reward 2. You receive plus 20 stat points. This is awesome well what should I put this in? Vitality. That would give me more percentage of 1 for all without taking any damage. But then, it increases my power mostly by amplifying my strength. Well I'll see about that later. Or I'll put it all in intelligence, he muttered, finally coming to a decision. Name is Midoriya level 55. Job Necromancer Fatigue 0. Idle the Chosen 1 plus 2 others. HP 76100. MP 25910. Strength 103. Vitality 100. Agility 96. Intelligence 116. Sent 65. Remaining points 0. Right. So accept reward 3. You selected reward 3. I don't really have high expectations from the hidden reward, Izuku thought as the box in his hand disappeared, leaving a scroll. Recipe. Holy Water of Life. You can now learn the recipe of Holy Water of Life. Item. Holy Water of Life. Item class. S. Type. Consumable. A mysterious potion that can cure any disease or medical condition using powerful magic. Effects only take place after consuming the full bottle. W. What? M. Mom can wake up now. Wait I need three materials for this. I obtained the World Tree Fragment from the boss on the 50th floor and Spring of Echoing Forest by defeating Midas just now. The third item, however it is on the top floor. Izuku looked upwards as he sighed. I can t continue like this. I need to get even more powerful since this shit s getting harder. I am in no condition to clear it. Wait for me mom, just a little more. Two months to the UA entrance exams. Izuku, Kaminari, Ichigo, and others were relentlessly training for the entrance exams as it got closer and closer. Right now, it was time for Izuku to get his rank finally evaluated. So here he was, sitting in the waiting section for quirk and awakening evaluation. He was sitting next to a few others, mostly middle-agers. There is no need to be nervous. There have been a few hunters and heroes who got their lives turned upside down by this, but those are very few. It is really rare for someone to jump two or three ranks, let alone all the way to the top, said a person who was sitting in front of him. But if you even get to D rank or above, you ll get sought after by those scouts. Since small guilds don t really have many members, they try to attract members who get revaluated, the person explained as Izuku sweat dropped. I don't think a guild will hire me since I am still a middle schooler and I am preparing for my high school entrance exams, said Izuku. Wow, anyone would think that you're about 18 or 19 looking at your muscles. How did you even get that much hide and muscles? Asked the person in awe as he took a long look at them. I think it is due to my reawakening and workout routine, Izuku replied momentarily shuddering at the thought of the daily tasks and the penalty. He was so tempted to not do the tasks and try to include those centipedes in his army, however their mana much like the bosses in that dungeon was corrupted. Izuku Midoriya will you please come inside? Said the girl who was apparently testing the ranks. These revaluations mean a lot to people. 
I guess a person's rank matters more than his qualifications and every other thing. Izuku entered the room as the lady directed him to the detector. May I know your name? Izuku Midoriya. Right, you're here for reevaluation. She asked as she checked the records. He already got a rank. Why is it that it's mostly a rankers that come for reevaluation? Here, please put your hand on the black crystal and wait, she said with a sigh as Izuku followed her instruction. Wait error. Let me just ask my superior officers, she said as she rushed to somewhere. She approached a person who was just walking towards the desk. Sir, there's an error, she said to him as the person sighed. Where's Kadro? He has gone to the washroom. That guy, leaving his post during busy hours. Though I am doing the same. He then moved to the desk and took a look at the screen, and the next moment his eyes widened. What he yelled, bewildered. What happened, sir? She asked in a confused tone. Right, you don't know this. Well, this basically means he is immeasurable. He might as well be Japan's 11th S rank hunter hero, he muttered with wide eyes. Mara was standing with best genist outside of the regulation building, talking when genist heard voices. Huh? What is this commotion? He asked Mara. What commotion, sir? Ah, sorry, it is just that due to my quirk, I can feel vibrations in my strings, which are currently indicating that something big is happening, he said as Mara sighed. Probably some low ranker making a fuss again. Please wait here, I'll go check it out, he said as he started to walk when Genus started to walk behind. I'll come with you, I feel something interesting will happen, he said. As they reached inside, they heard scouts talking amongst themselves. Are you kidding me? An S ranker. I am betting he has something in mind, but I'll still try. Ah, I see, I suppose he is here, said Mara with a victorious smirk. Who? Oh, an interesting acquaintance, said Mara shrugging it off. The next moment he was greeted by Izuku. Yo Mara senpai, he said with a cheeky smile as Mara rolled his eyes. Be happy that I am tired, or I would beat you up, he said jokingly. Oh, so you both know each other, best genist commented, as Izuku's eyes fell on him. Best genist ah sorry, I am just a big fan. And yeah, well, you see we met a few months ago after a dungeon incident. We've even running into each other. After the third time I was like f screw being formal, Izuku said almost slipping out a swear. UV got a sharp tongue there, commented best genist, and Izuku gave an apologetic look. Sorry, it's just that being alone as a quirkless weak kid, I had to pick these stuff up to be able to assert some dominance over others, said Izuku, as best genist nodded. It was true that these things didn't really do anything, however amongst kids, this is seen as something only delinquents and thugs do, and they left this kind of people alone. Right. Anyways, so I heard you've been reevaluated as an S rank. So I would like to offer you a position in my guild, best genus said as Izuku sighed and shook his head. I am sorry, I'll have to pass on that, he said as he walked past him and many others who were shocked by his answer. What? Chapter 50 Izuku was sitting next to his mother who was laying on a bed attached to many pieces of equipment. Eternal slumber. A sleep no one can wake up from. This started when the gates broke out. Even though the DNA itself changed as per the mana, i.e., chaos magic, some people still were unable to withstand strong bursts of mana. Some people who were vulnerable and were around people with a lot of mana, or worse, had a lot of mana themselves entered a state when their cognitive functions stopped sending them into a sleep-like state they never wake up from. Even now, tests are going on to cure it, but people affected by that were and are still kept on life support to gather data. Don't worry mom, I'll save you soon. Just wait for me till then. He stood up as he started walking outside, thinking about getting stronger when he saw Mara. Ah hey oh senpai, he said as Mara joined him. Hello Hunter Midoriya, he greeted formally. I guess it is business then. Please tell me what I can do for you? Asked Izuku with a mock serious face. Well, working on that business face would be a start. But for now, you just need to meet someone so I would appreciate it if you could accompany me, Mara said as Izuku deadpanned. Even when you're serious you're still sarcastic, he said with a tick mark on his forehead. I am just honest, Mara said walking ahead of Izuku. Yeah right, of course, you are, Izuku rolled his eyes. Anyways, so I've been meaning to ask you, did you clear that dungeon eight months ago? Asked Mara. No. I still don't understand what happened that day. But I plan to find out, said Izuku this time with an actually serious face. I now both were outside the hospital as Mara walked to a GTR. Wow, a Nissan GTR 452402, this one s awesome he yelled excitedly. Thank you, I appreciate the compliment, Mara said with a smile. UV got a real good car, said Izuku marveling at the interior. Right. Anyways, let me take you to the headquarters of the Hunter and Hero Association, Mara said as he started the car. Are you sure you want to drive? I mean you look like you'd defrull asleep any second, Izuku commented cheekily. Haha, very funny, Mara replied with an eye roll. Izuku was sitting in front of Japan's one of the most respected people, who went by the name the Silver Fang Satoshi Haddock. 
He doesn't look that old, thought Izuku. Hello Mr. Midoriya, Satoshi greeted. Hello Mr. President. I didn't he know I was coming here to meet you, or I would be changed into something more presentable, Izuku said with an awkward smile, since right now he was wearing his only t-shirt t-shirt Kaminari had let him keep. Ah, it s no problem. In fact, I find this t-shirt rather clever, he commented with a smile. I know right but my fry sorry, I've got a habit of rambling. So could you enlighten me on why I got this opportunity to meet you? Izuku asked seriously. Ah, well, first of all, no need to be this formal. As for why, well, you're here to discuss the results of the rank revaluation, he replied as he looked at him. What about it President San? Izuku said with a mildly interested face. Judging by your expression you know what this is about. I know you're much more perceptive than you let it show, Satoshi said with a smile as Izuku smirked. But for official purposes, I'll explain it to you. You see, we don't actually evaluate S rankers after three days. This was an alibi to buy time to talk to you about something very serious, the president said as Izuku's face turned serious. You see, as of right now the hero and hunter system is at one such point that the power distribution is almost equal amongst the top guilds and teams. We currently have 10 S rank heroes hunters in the country, I, All Might, Endeavor, Best Genist, Hawks, Ryuku, Retired Hero Canary, Retired Healer Hunter Merlin, Crossed and Edshot, he said as Izuku nodded in understanding. Now as much as we trust all these individuals, it would be wiser to not upset the balance of power. You see right now keeping heroes in check are both the association and other heroes and hunters. However, if this balance gets upset, it would only be us, and the association can do little to nothing against such powerful opponents. So, I request you to join the association, Satoshi said straightforwardly. I decline. Satoshi, expecting this, sighed with disappointment as he looked at Izuku. All right. Is there anything that we can do for you? He asked. Yes, there is. We both know that the top guilds in Japan are actually the ones inherited instead of new ones, with their current owners being the founding members. So, I'd say it would be a rather fresh change for the newest S rank to make his own guild right. I mean that would maintain the balance of power while capturing public interest, which would play a large role in enhancing the public image of Hero Association, especially when the guild will work with the Hero Association, one tiered. Ask Izuku with a smirk as Satoshi raised his eyebrow in interest. I am guessing you have some conditions along with this offer, since it is going to benefit us a lot more than it will benefit you, Satoshi said as Izuku nodded. Yes. I've got some favors to ask you. The first one is pretty legal. Clause 572b, the interminable clause states that under special circumstances an underage kid can apply for vehicle licenses ranging from two-wheeler all the way to airplanes, Izuku stated, and Satoshi grinned. Yes. I must say, I am really impressed. Done. Next, ILL need a license for making a guild, Izuku said as Satoshi chuckled. Well, since I've also read the constitution pretty well, here as a fact. The clause you're talking about actually doesn't specify vehicles, it just states license for activities otherwise criminalized including vehicles, which means guilds are included. Pretty legal. Izuku was impressed since he had overlooked the word including while going through the constitution. Wow that is awesome, he said. Right. Anything else? Yes, one last thing, which is going to be pretty hard even for you. I want, let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.